you want to wait a bit with therapy today and everything, but could we talk about stuff? I'm still not clear on why you changed your mind. First off, you trying to get with this or what? Well, so rationally, I know I shouldn't, right? But uh, the heart wants okay. what the heart wants. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. the dick wants what the dick wants. That's what we're talking about here. Well, you are worried. That's why you're here. Yeah, exactly. I'm why not worried. This, you are this fucking are you paranoid. In this fact, is like a, you this is a fucking this three call, topic caller situation. Is <laughs> yes, yes, you are lying. I haven't talked to that in a year. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. All right, go ahead and leave. That oh, was your Jesus. chance. You wanted to okay. get out of the test. If Steven, Kyla leaves, I ask. leave. Just make an ask. Just okay. make an ask, Steven. What? Make an ask. What do you want? I want you to get the f out because you want to leave. I don't want you to be here if you don't want to be here. I, you know what? I have things to do if you have conversations uh, you'd like to have. Just like Bye. yesterday. You just message me. You, what the f do you want? And you just f***ing falsely. I don't know what you want. What do you want? Oh, we. All right. Yeah. Okay. We We're going to go. Hey, you guys have fun. Uh, yeah. All right, Darius. Have fun with that, Darius. That'll Thanks be fun. The, uh, Thanks for the call-ins, guys. The pre-show call-ins. Wow, that was... All right, let's nice get started up. with this dating advice. <laughs> hey, well, bye, first guys. dating advice. Yeah. We, need to, we need to invest in some aesthetic for Tabor. Hey, Melina. Yeah, Tabor. It looks like you're hey, fucking... Yeah, on I'm living like... In... Listen. You got the nice one. You got a living room in your holiday and Yeah, though. now I do. Yeah, no. Turn on the cameras, Steve, you f***ing idiot. I told you this an hour ago. You could have got more viewers. But you're Nobody f***ing there... care. It's random people that oh, are really? famous people should I, take a vote? should I take a vote if people care? i don't care what the oh, vote is it's cares. random oh, personal oh, drama oh, between people in my personal life i'm not here to farm this particular stuff for views right. weird whatever whatever that's fine they do care you're just that's wrong. great that they care i'm not here to but necessarily like nobody cares point check mate hey okay, good job dan wow you're gonna fucking get crushed nope. on today's show okay i'm gonna you want to talk about stuff between you and your wife dan you want to talk about your personal stuff that's going on dan that we talked about at dinner last night what that's right shut the up, there ain't okay? nothing Slow going down. on, my old lady. Stop. Stop. Okay, let's do a You're, show. Oh my god. Before everybody you, shit is You heavy. can't just make up <laughs> like that. People are gonna believe. Oh, stop. No. Whatever. Just go. Go. Yeah. Go. Hey, I gotta go. I got. I gotta go. You're, I gotta I, go, but I just wanted to say, uh, have oh, a you're not show, here, Kyla. Tabor, for this. Have a yeah. have a good show, Kyla. I love you, <laughs> Thanks, Tabor. Wait, Tabor. Oh, shit. No, he's only here for me, <laughs> Destiny. Unfucking real, bro. <laughs> Holy. Is this okay. just the fridge burning, Eric? We just is have it uh, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff going on in here. You guys are active today. It, okay, are we guys, good? Is everybody here good? Everybody Dan here okay? Dan was here just smirking the whole time, and I was laughing mostly at Dan. Can we get the f cool. cameras up and get the f show going? <laughs> yeah, chill. I'm just trying to make sure everybody everybody right. needs to decompress. Okay. I'm calm. I just don't know what I walked into. That's okay. It. For, okay, let's check microphones. Kyla. Talk. I turn it down 15%. Is it good for you? Check, um, check, 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 check. I turned you back up. Dan's talk. Yes. Hello. Okay. You guys feeling okay? No, not really, because now I'm going to have a million f***ing idiots who think you're serious <laughs> and I'm on the rocks with my wife. Thanks for that. You just, you're so stupid. I don't have enough shit going in my life. Fine. Let's go. Bring in this f***ing first one. Go. <laughs> okay. Chill. I don't know. Me... Age 32. Sex. <laughs> cis male. Pronouns. He, him. Sexual, sexual or... <laughs> Sexual orientation, straight, employment status, employed, housing status, lives alone. Great. Bring him in here. <laughs> okay. Just go. Hello. What do you What the fuck is wrong with you? What, concerned he was acting manipulative in your last relationship. All right, what did you do? Hey, Hi. how's it going? Hey, what up, dude? It's not your fault, it's ours. Yeah, what going on today? Yeah. Um Yeah, turn your mic up. Okay, you're fucking quiet. Okay. How about that? <laughs> you even you're good. What do you got for us today, dude? Okay. Um uh, let's see. So uh here, before we start, introduce us to yourself. Or, uh give us what's your name? Do you, uh, talk, just talk for a second. It'll, it'll, uh, loosen the wheels or something. I don't know what they're saying there. Um, what, do you go to school? What are you doing? I know it says it in the preamble or whatever, but go, just talk. Okay, so, uh, let's see. I'm being manipulated right now. Faster. <laughs> so, I lived with my ex for about eight years. Uh, she got super obsessed. I know, I'm kind of skipping things here. Go, so she got kind of super obsessed with the red pill kind of saw it as the ultimate threat to everything 
and okay. me and her therapist kind of, you know, tried to calm her down on that. Discussion. Wait, was she obsessed with red pill stuff and saw the threat because you were listening to red pill shit, or she was just seeing it online and was getting worried or something? Uh, she was seeing it online. Like, she would run through, like, a hundred Reddit posts to find one guy being an asshole, and then, like, that would ruin her whole day. Like, okay. she would just be super fixated, be really upset about that. Um, okay. So, I How does, What's the problem with you? Yeah. How does this tie back into your relationship? Well, I feel like I kind of would echo what her therapist was telling her, which was, you know, just to try to, you know, take some distance from it. It's not her responsibility. And also, like, what are the chances it happens to blow up into a big thing? And I guess it kind of did. So uh, that did not help. Okay, her. how did that, what did that? So you guys had a big fight about the red pill stuff. What was the actual, like, opposite, opposing sides? Well, she felt like I was kind of, um, well, she would accuse me of things like gaslighting her and saying that, you know, it wasn't really that big of a threat. Um, gaslighting her over what, though? Like, what were you guys actually fighting about? Well, that's kind of the trouble. It was very confusing. Like, I have some chat logs where we, I would kind of try to ask her to be very explicit. Like, okay, what exactly was I doing that was abusive or gaslighting? And she would always be kind of vague and then just kind of either threaten to cut off all contact or end the conversation there wait can you are these uh, logs posted in the yeah it's in uh it's the d drive there's convo point five is about the red pill stuff from what i've seen oh yeah hold on yeah there's a lot in the convo point five um okay are you the a name and she's the d name yeah okay do you mind if I read some of these out loud or no? Shoot. Did you say shoot? Uh, yeah, go for it. Okay. You. I'm sure we'll get, in, sure we'll get into this in more detail, but can you give me a rough idea of a response you would have appreciated more? Her. I'd like to give you an answer, but I'm feeling pretty raw and activated. I'm not sure I can convey myself very well. This is kind of a shitty point to stop it at, but can we continue, after, can we continue this after I've had my therapy appointment? You. Definitely. Smiley face. I know I'm pushing, but I really care about you. Even if you decide you want nothing to do with me after we talk everything through, that's not going to change. I feel like I'm starting to understand at least. Her. Yeah, I'm basically so upset because this relationship means so much to me. Thank you for being willing to talk, though. I appreciate that. What is she upset about right now? Oh, maybe if you uh, read it in order, that would help. Um, you know, I know that's like super complicated. Well, this was the first file in the You thing, know, there was yeah. actually like, there's like file names. I know that's oh, fucking Jesus crazy. Oh, Jesus Christ! Sorry. Okay, that the point test. five one. No, 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 forget it. Hold on, I'm going to start in a, on a different order. I'm going to try going uh, in chronological <laughs> order, okay? I'm going to try going chronologically. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's do that. Okay. In fairness, if you read them scattered, it doesn't really clarify what she's angry about. Well, that's fine. Okay, you. So it's fine if you want to wait a bit with therapy today and everything, but could we talk about stuff? I'm still not clear on why you changed your mind about me being abusive or a lot of related stuff, I guess. Her. Yeah, I haven't really known how to broach the subject. I haven't changed my mind about you being abusive in the past, just whether or not it was intentional. Even just typing that out kind of gets my heart going a bit, but basically it seems like I w it was accidental and that it's possible to come to an understanding about that. Are you both around 20? How old are you? 32. She's 33. Wow. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry. Let me keep reading. Um, you. All right. It's tough because my memory of the relationship involves a lot of walking on eggshells and catering to your needs and moods. Doing that for eight years and then being told it was abusive has been tough to process. Her, you know, I don't wake up angry anymore. I don't go to bed angry anymore. You denying that there was any reason for me to be angry really messed me up. And I get that there were consequences to that, but I couldn't not be angry with the continual denial I was dealing with on a daily basis living with you. You, what was one of the reasons? Her, you still don't see how you handled the whole alt-right slash red pill thing was so messed up. You. Every time we would talk about this, you would mention your reaction to something that was never quite clear, and then my reaction to your reaction, but the basic thing motivating, motivating it all is one big question mark in my head. One sec. Her? Okay. I'm still not sure how to approach this all in a way that you'll understand. Um, damn, okay, we'll keep going. You, alt-right slash red pill stuff from before Trump. Uh, her, all the way up to right around the time we moved to a place. 
When you started talking about how you didn't know how someone could end up in a cult, and honestly, I wish you would try uh, talk to a therapist about this. You, is there any more context to that? I mean, I ramble about a lot of loosely related subjects. Side eyes. Also, there's a meme post. Um, and then I'm just, I'm gonna, I don't know if, is any of this meaningfully different after this, Kyla? Or I'll just read these um, things in my head. It's, if I'm reading through, it sounds like she predicted the alt-right to become more fascistic, and you didn't really believe that she had enough evidence for that claim, and somehow that turned into a relationship, like a long-standing relationship feud. Am I understanding correctly? Uh, basically, yeah. Okay. So... So you guys, that's, where's the where's the part that you were abusive exactly? Yeah, that's kind it of. It sounds like so. It sounds like what I'm piecing things together. I'm only on page three, but it sounds like she had really strong feelings about some political movements. You didn't feel the same way, and she felt like you were gaslighting her because you didn't necessarily feel the same way about them. Yeah, well, the main thing that I, I would push back on was just how completely obsessive she would get about this. Like she would literally hop on the computer in the morning read through hundreds of posts, find something to get upset about, and then, like, just fixate on that. Like, that was her whole day. And Have you guys, like, um, do you guys do couples therapy, or was it just singular therapy? Uh, she was in therapy. We never actually did couples therapy. Oh, damn, that probably would have been... So, what? was she, like, a hater of the red pill shit, or, like, a believer yeah. in it? No, no she was a massive angry. hater. So she just massive woke up hater. every day and was, like, obsessed with, like, hating red pill shit and that you were abusive because you're like listen bitch it's fine it's just some random shit is that what's going on here uh, i mean basically yeah more or less and then his communication around it is like where she the, the main thing i can see in your communication like i'm gonna be honest it, it could be biased you could have cherry picked the screenshots she looks worse in almost all of the communications like she's doing a lot more like I would say, like, kind of manipulative, kind of, like, emotionally guilting stuff. Yeah, and that comment but, of, like, oh, you don't know how to resolve conflict, do you? <laughs> yeah, the main thing I see that you do consistently across the board is kind of this, like, passive dig where you're being like, well, I was willing to go to therapy. And so it's kind of like a little, like, it's like an extra little knock when she's, like, asking if you're willing to go now. But, like, I, I wouldn't I, I mean, that that's a little bit of, I think, justified defensiveness because somebody's like, do you want to go to therapy to fix it? It's like, well, I was willing to. I can see that being like. I, that's that's, that's what I'm really trying to steel man her and be like, this is the like the worst that I've been seeing from you. But you like you could be cherry picking these screenshots. Let's go, but... let's go to the next one. Remember uh, chronological order there, Steve. Convo one. Wait, the next. Oh, oh OK. Yeah. Um, hold on. Wait. I, so I read through a little bit of convo one. Hold on. You, this is, I'm sorry to treat your life like an experiment, but that you are, this is like the thing. This is the meme yeah, where yeah, I know. somebody gets obsessed about some online shit and then they take that online stuff and it ruins their mind and it ruins their head. Cause it sounds like, um, I haven't read through all of this convo the next one yet. Did you guys actually have problems between the two of you absent this stuff? Like really bad problems. Obviously everybody argues or whatever, but like, did you guys ever get into huge fights over stuff? Shared responsibilities in the household, abusive stuff, mentally fucking each other. Like, did any of that ever happen, or? Well, not after the first couple years. She basically realized she was an alcoholic and stopped drinking. Like, that's something I give her a lot of credit for. Mm -hmm. Like, she was willing to make big steps to reach a healthier place. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, not really. I mean, we. I worked from home. We lived like right next to each other. Like her computer set up, you know, right next to mine, basically. Would be trading memes, talking about stuff all day. There wasn't a lot mm -hmm. of conflict the, so when she wasn't triggered by these something. These types of messages are huge red flags. So she's saying, I'm not trying to put you in the same camp as my dad. I'm accurately describing your behavior as dishonest and manipulative. And then you inquire, you say, can I be unintentionally manipulative? And she says, yes. A simple Google search is all it takes to say that gaslighting can be unintentional and even unconscious. Yeah, the using psych terms to put me in a box before we've even like really discussed things, that was something that really... Annoyed yeah, here, so here's, okay, this is like general advice to everybody, and it's very specific advice to you. Are you guys broken up now? Yeah. Okay, so here's a couple things. Um, Kyla can chime on this because she was a therapist, and Dan can chime on this because he's a funny guy. Um, two things. One, I would always be insanely hesitant to use any psych terms when you're trying to resolve a conflict between two people, because almost every time those are going to be weaponized and used in highly aggressive manners that are used to discredit your feelings and justify the feelings of the other person 100%. So that's always a red flag. When, st when people start accusing you of stuff like that, like you're being emotionally manipulative, you're gaslighting, blah, blah, blah. Most of the time, I think that's inappropriate to bring up in a one-on-one -on -one setting, number one. And number two, 
this is something that I feel very, 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 very strongly about. Kyla might super disagree on this. Um, I do not believe in going to therapy to resolve relationship issues. I think therapy should be for personal issues. If you want to resolve relationship issues, you need to go to a couples counselor. In my opinion, very few things are worse than somebody going to therapy and then coming back to tell you what their therapist said about your relationship. It feels like those types of things are almost always ultra weaponized. And I see her saying things in these messages too, like, well, my therapist said this about how you interact with me, or my therapist said that, because one, she could be totally misinterpreting what her therapist is saying. Two, she could be full out lying to her therapist about you know what the interactions are like. Or three, the therapist could be working with her on a longer thing and trying to like get some kind of like rapport or buy-in where she's like, yeah, you know, the, the, your boyfriend doesn't sound like he's acting perfectly here. And then she's running with those messages. You know, she's like, oh, well, my therapist told me that you're shit. You ain't shit. You're doing all this blah, 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 blah. You have couples problems. I think that those should be resolved with couples therapy or maybe one therapist that you both see independently. But I see that happen quite a bit where people will weaponize what their therapist says in an argument with somebody. And now you're actually super fucked because not only are they throwing psych terms at you and fighting with you, well, now they've got a therapist backing up supposedly everything they're saying. Uh, you guys can do on that. I would say basically like, I think therapy can be for couples, but it's couples therapy. Like you don't, it's typically like, so, sometimes it's really good for individuals to go to therapy. But like, if I'm ever working with a client, for example, in addictions counseling, I would tell them if you're talking with your family, for example, you don't get to say my counselor said this about you. Like I told them, you don't get to weaponize me because I don't know your family and friends and I haven't talked to them. I'm only seeing your side. So like, this is something that any good therapist would be disagreeing with uh, her doing. Um, this is not something that any therapist would be like, yeah, feel free to weaponize me and tell them I said this. That's not really how therapy typically works. Um, I, this, this, when I read this situation, we kind of have like this thing that we'll say like addictions counseling when like a client will like lose their shit over like milk, for example, like they want like a certain amount of milk and there's like none left or something. And typically we we'll say like, it's never about the milk. Like it's always about something else. This is one of these situations where I'm like, it feels like it has to be about something else. Cause why the fuck would she care this much this long? But also why do you care so much to be like, no, you didn't predict it. Like in my head, I'm like, I feel like I'd be just be like, I don't care. Whatever. Sure. You predicted it like, and move on. So I feel like you're both fighting over this topical issue when there was actually a whole other issue going on underneath. And I don't know what it is. For her, it's probably some, some in her view, it would be probably some noxious pattern of you gaslighting and manipulating her and not actually listening to her, or taking her seriously. And probably to your extent, it would be like, I'm not sure what your end would be, but you guys are fighting over this topical red pill shit. And I'm like, it's not about this. It can't be. And if it is, that's kind of crazy a little bit, to be honest. Well, <laughs> just to be that. real quick on that, it doesn't seem like, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, it's never about the thing that it is. Right. Like when somebody else me, oh, me and my wife broke up. I was like, well, why? Well, I forgot to make her coffee yesterday. That's not why you fucking broke up. That was the last thing in a long chain of events that happened. But it feels like in this, usually those things will come up in the argument, but it doesn't sound like she's bringing anything up like, oh, well, you did this or that. It seems like it literally is all revolving around her obsessive infatuation with like this online culture shit is what it feels like. Yeah. I'll, I'll say this. I've gone through the, uh, the third convo here and I see that they're sending you screenshots of articles of yeah. psychology stuff. And I just want to say that like, we've Dan, seen careful. some situations Dan. like this in the past and it's just, I think you're good to go. Dan, I think that this just stop. isn't a good match for you. That's not, that's not even good advice. It is good advice. This is obviously not a good relationship. And I think that you should just, you know, let it, let it be and move on. And that's that. And don't dwell on that. This is just someone, it's their fault, not yours. I'm going to go ahead and throw it, throw it out right there. It seemed like she wanted some sort of validation, some sort of emotional validation that I wasn't giving her because I'm, I don't know, over-intellectualizing the situation or something. So I guess I was just well, it's not, Yeah, it seems like I for can... her, she was diving, she was getting involved in an online culture that felt the, like the most important thing in the world. These are women's issues, women's rights, red pill shit. And she's coming to you, basically. Do you watch my stream a lot? Do you follow me like the trans genocide arc on Vosh's stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was like that. She's coming and she's like, bro, there's some red pill shit that's going to fucking end women in the United States. Roe v. Wade getting over to all this shit is fucked. And you're kind of like, you're not as engaged with it. So you're like, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe not. You know, it could or whatever. And she's like, how do you not see how important this is? And then when stuff starts heading a certain way, now she's now 
when your refusal to engage with that in an ultra critical manner to her in her world kind of feels a little bit manipulative or gaslighting because in her mind, there's literally a threat at the door and you're saying like, oh, it's not that big a deal or like who cares or they're probably not even gonna come in. And she views it as getting worse and worse and worse. And I think in her mind, that's why it feels like you're gaslighting or manipulating her because there's clearly the worst thing in the world right here that you're not willing to engage with. That's what it feels like. Did this but, happen like during and over COVID? Um, so let's see. When did it start? I see 2022 on the third conversation. Yeah, I mean. Or is it all post COVID uh, that she started obsessing about this stuff? It was basically all during COVID and like right about when Trump got elected and everything started going to shit, basically. Mm -hmm. You guys politically diverge a fair bit? Um. Not really. I guess I'm center left. She's a little bit further left, but she watches know. on. No. How far left really are we watch. talking? Um. Oh man. I mean, she was super into uh like BDSM when we first got together. Um. So I mean, pretty far left, I guess. Okay. Um. Yeah. Fuck. I don't have good advice. I didn't. I didn't know that this actually happened. <laughs> yeah. This <laughs> or, is. I was hoping really that these were kind of like online memes, but rough. this seems like the person that goes online gets ultra radicalized reading shit like this. It looks like the two X chromosomes poster. Like, oh, like I, I was trying to tell my boyfriend that Roe v. Wade meant that women were going to be crucified all across the U.S. and he didn't accept it, and now I dumped him because I know that he's a gaslighting, manipulative, evil person. That's what this reads like. I felt like I could reason with her, but like whenever she would get triggered it's like that that emotion would just take over everything else nothing else mattered nothing i said got through it's like she was expecting me to follow this script that like she should know i don't you know i'm not part of the red pill not any of those things i talk to her about this stuff all day every day mm -hmm. i just feel like i never got credit for that i was always well but the issue is that you weren't as militant as she was yeah and for he, these types of people war. it's all or nothing right yeah she yeah, was I going to that. war and you weren't um, if the question is, am I super manipulative and gas lady, the issue is if somebody construes a reality for themselves and you are pretty sure that that's not reality, I wouldn't say it's gaslighting to say this isn't really true, but I can understand for that person in their experience, why they would maybe call it that the issue is like, that doesn't mean that that's actually happening. Right? Like I imagine if somebody was like in a psychotic episode and i said well none of these things are actually happening that mm -hmm. they would maybe feel a little bit gaslit but that doesn't mean that you're inherently gaslighting them especially because like gaslit gets thrown around a lot i try to limit it to like you're somewhat intentionally trying to like convince people that they're crazy to like obfuscate responsibility away from yourself and that's not really what was going on yeah all right Just so like what is your ultimately i guess what is your question to, to, is whether or not you feel like you were being manipulative or not I guess, yeah, whether I was being manipulative and whether, like, she is intentionally mischaracterizing me or if she is she just so threatened that mm -hmm. this is the story she's constructed to make sense of how she's feeling. And yeah, I think it's up. I think it's more the latter than the former. Although, to be fair, if you were super manipulative, you could be hardcore cherry picking these screenshots and we wouldn't know. So, <laughs> but I mean, based on what I think we've seen, I think we all kind of agree with that. Yeah. Damn, that sucks that like an eight year relationship, though, gets that's awful. Fucked. Sorry about that one, chief. Yeah, thanks. But, I mean, I basically yeah, I said the same thing. Like, did not need to go on for that long. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Any oh, final thoughts, Dan? Um, I saw like boobs a minute ago. Just to be clear, on someone's. Screen. Oh yeah, that was on my screen. Sorry, that's my screensaver. <laughs> okay, just Wait, like just just wanted to throw that out. It's, it's it's my it's my husband's body attached to like a swimsuit model. Oh, okay. oh like His you head. saw boobs or boobs in a swimsuit? It wasn't uh, boobs. It was boobs in a swimsuit. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Okay. All right. Just, well, you know, my mind was there instantly. <laughs> sorry, That's how fast I am. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. What do we oh. got? Hello. Oh. Hi. What? Hey there. How are you? We're doing good. Tell us. What do you got? Uh, Neat. Yeah. My name is, well, let's go with Ajax. I'm 23. Uh, yeah. And my issue is, well, I don't know if you just read it out, but. Um, yeah, whenever I've gotten into a relationship or gotten with somebody, uh, the amount of attraction that I have for them just immediately falls off to basically zero. And it's happened every single time successively. Sorry, restate, you're how old? 23? Yeah, 23. 
Okay, so this screenshot that you're showing is... Oh, right, the screenshot is from the second part of the issue that I have <laughs> that we can talk about. And uh, that oh, is, okay. basically, I have a friend. And uh, it's the situation that Destiny talks about a lot where uh, I kind of feel like they want to be in a relationship with me, but they said they haven't. And we've talked about that plenty of times. But they get really jealous and annoyed whenever I go and see other people or do anything with other people. But I've, I really, really like this person, and uh, I have a great friendship with them. I do a lot of things that I enjoy and really love doing with them, and I don't want to have to do the thing where I just kind of cut it all off. And I want to know if there's something else that I can do. Wait, so you want to date this person, or they don't? No, they. Uh, I don't want to date them. Uh, but they want to date you. Is the feeling that I've got, but they have said actively Hold and on. recently that they, they get jealous when you hook up with other people. Mm -hmm. Okay, they wanted to. Okay. Hear. And mm -hmm. the way that you guys are texting, sorry, is this screenshot from you? <laughs> yeah, that's or how from we them? text. It's for both of us, is how we're texting each other. Um, okay. So we text each other in quite, yeah, like the babyish manner. We're like, we're have saying, you... I love you. This is how we say goodnight to each other pretty much every night. It isn't. Okay. And then <laughs> yeah. let me ask, how many times have you guys hooked up? Mm, about. <laughs> Okay, like that's what three I thought. years okay, yeah, ago, no, three years ago, but I haven't in within like three years. I haven't been with them at all. Sure. Okay. So this woman is fuck zoned hard. Why are you fucking yeah. with? Her? Uh, yeah, yeah. Basically, yes. Yeah, so I just end this relationship, but I don't want to because I want to be friends with this person. I actually, well, because you're getting some with. amount of like emotional validation and everything out of this person, but you're kind of stringing them along, right? Because it's pretty obvious that. Especially if you guys are talking like this, she's probably waiting for you to like wake up and realize like we can be together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're a bad dude. <laughs> I, okay. I mean, I would, I wouldn't, I would say like it's better if you know that the person, like it's kind to like cut it off and stuff. I don't think like necessarily if somebody's like choosing to be let on, it's the end of the world. The issue is like, especially if you're like keeping her around for like some form of validation, it's just like probably, especially if you have no intention of dating, like why are you still texting like this with this individual? Um, Cause to her, this looks like a duck and is quacking like a duck. Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. I'm just and you slept together, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's that one. If I just for clear, if I if I was you for her, what I would do is I would send a message and I'd say like, "Hey, listen, um, you're uncomfortable with doing these other people. We're still texting in a quasi romantic sense." Like, I think that we're going to, I'm going to tone down the way that I communicate with you hardcore. And then we can like reevaluate our friendship from there. Um, Cause it's possible that they'll need time to accept that. And then after they've had like a few weeks or a month or whatever, they can re-engage in a way that they see appropriate. But like mm -hmm. going on head forward like this, like this person is like waiting for you to wake up and date them. That's what they're yeah, waiting for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. The first one is you're just losing interest in everyone that you date. Really quickly. Uh, pretty much everyone. Yeah. Unless they do not show interest in me. If they're like, uh, actively ignore me or start not liking me, I will start mm. to like them again. Do you hate clinginess? Um, yeah. Duh. Like, when you say, okay, what would you describe as clinginess? Mm, needing to text me, um, like, all the time and talk about something, even generally if there's not something to talk about, like creating conversation when there's really nothing going on, or... Uh, somebody that needs to see you like half the week, probably. <laughs> I don't, yeah. Um, okay. Well, on your first and second problem, you're still really young, right? Like, so there's still time to like find somebody that you don't get bored of or that doesn't mm -hmm. come across as like clingy or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't understand the not liking attention from, or when people don't give me attention, I start liking them again as well. That's kind of like a standard guy thing. Or yeah. it might be a girl thing as well. Like kind of like the chase can be exciting. Um, you're probably that's just a thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that ever okay. goes away, but it's not that's not a good enough thing to like build a relationship off of, right? Like oh, chasing this person is fun, and then you get the thing, and then you're like, okay, I'm bored now, right? Yeah, and that's what it seems to be every time. And I'm quite, uh, I give quite generous compliments, <laughs> so I probably need to stop that off because, uh, yeah, I just have a really hard time distinguishing. Um, the emotions that I actually feel for somebody. And I yeah, have realized that it's all just probably uh, the chase itself and getting to know somebody because that's what I really enjoy. It's like the first so, couple of weeks. 
Yeah, I'm not sure if you've ever heard about attachment theory, but there's mm. this there's a different form of attachments that you kind of solidify in like pre five. Um, and one of them is called avoidant and one of them is called anxious and anxious tends to be really clingy, clingy and avoidant tends to like distance and, and remove themselves. And mm-hmm. we'll often see these two types of people often falling into relationship with each other. Cause at first it's like the perfect match. And then it very quickly becomes like the worst triggering where one is constantly pulling away and the other one is constantly chasing. I'm not sure if that's what's going on, but when you're talking about like, as soon as they pull away, I get like way more interested um it might yeah. be like worth just exploring that i'm like by no means like saying that's necessarily going on it would be hard to say but that's what it makes me immediately think of is like reading stuff on like attachment literature might be helpful to you to like understand yourself a little bit better and see like is it just like normal guy shit of like if it's harder to get i want it more or is it more like is there something deeper there going on mm-hmm. okay yeah i can read up on that okay and awesome. any thoughts you're a bad dude, man. You got to get your shit together. This stuff fucked <laughs> up. You know it, too. Um, you came in here knowing you're a bad bro. So Yeah, bad in the eyes of Dan. It's nah, the worst kind of crime. It is. So you got to sort yourself out. All right? Get it together. I believe in you, though. You can do it. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the time. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Wow. Who's next? Man, the previous conversation just took it out of you guys, hey? You okay? Yeah, I'm good. I'm chill. Hello? Hello. Nice microphone. Try one more time. Hello. Hello. Can you hear oh. me? Yep. Loud and clear. Yeah. What's up? Okay. Um, so I have like a general, more broad question that has like a specific application. So like the broad question is, how do you try to, um, I guess, post-mortem a relationship, trying to find some sort of objective value from how to improve especially if you're given like harsh criticism and um yeah there's like some specific um text songs you can go over to try and like uh case study this oh this is super long hold on okay yes sir. um which just to be clear there's are you purple or yellow oh um i'm purple okay oh my god yeah i know it's really long i stopped i stopped i just stopped screenshotting after a while because i figured no one's gonna read this long anyway Oh, um, and is Hold this, on. is this, yeah, who's the person you're talking? You don't need to give us a name, but like gender and your relationship oh, with them. Um, that's a male and that's an ex. Ex-boyfriend, but your messages an, are from when you're dating. I think it was when we had just broke up, but, it, but our relationship didn't really change or feel like we were broken up. Hold on. I, you got to wait. I think the stream is frozen. So wait, my oh, stream yeah, is sorry. frozen. Yeah. Why? Oh, yep. I don't know. Everyone is doing the cox emote or something. Fuck you. All right, now you can talk. Um. Yeah, so this is an ex-boyfriend, but this was, I believe, if memory serves, this was like right shortly after we had broken up, but our relationship dynamic didn't really change after we broke up. Are we supposed to read one, two, or three first? Read three. What? Three? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. Oh my you, you said you're purple. Yeah, you said you're purple, and they're the yellow color. <laughs> yeah, yes, Do you they're yellow. Normally I'm normally type this way, where like you kind of like it's almost like a baby talk, where it's like yeah, uh, I'm wait, where's call? That's oh no, that's your normal. Um, that was like a these... dynamic between the two, but that wasn't like I didn't. Yeah, that's I didn't talk like that. I don't talk like that. You know. Okay. Um. Okay. I'm having trouble reading this and not like. I, what, do you mean? <laughs> Dan. what do you mean by that, Dan? I mean, Dan, like, can... sometimes I, I'm like reading the same paragraph like three times. I'm not understanding. Okay. 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 It's like when you get into a relationship, you kind of develop your own language of talking to each other. So that's well, right. Dan talks like, like this to his wife all the time, don't we? Yeah. yeah I, Dan, is it why this call ignores that how you talk with your, your wife? No. <laughs> Why is there, there's like three pages of you like in, in this person, like get up. Oh, okay. I will in a second, okay, okay, get up. I'll okay. oh, go to bed. Like what the fuck? So the whole point, okay, okay. So the whole point of this is we get to a certain point where it's just like a flip is switched. And then I was getting accused of being like manipulative and abusive. And I'm just curious of how to critically kind of evaluate something like this, especially when you're given like a pretty bold criticism that you should work on if it's true. 
Okay, so you can scroll down. Your screen is frozen again, by the way. Who? Yours. Not my, what's so whose stream do you think I'm talking about? <laughs> whose stream Your am stream I talking is frozen. about? When you say frozen, do you mean like it's lagging or what do you mean? I mean it's frozen. I'm looking at a fucking still shot of myself. Okay. Oh, okay, you fucking moron. The stream's not frozen, the fucking cameras are frozen. Is that what you mean you're, to say? You're the one who can't. You know what? <laughs> Hold on. I'm was the chat way. was the All chat right. moving? This was is a the great chat moving? example of where it's probably <laughs> Steven's fault and it's somehow getting flipped onto Dan. No, no, no. Hold on. I understand what's <laughs> happening now. The picture is frozen because I maximized the Google thing, so Discord must pause the video in the background to conserve resources on the system. Okay. Dan is erroneously saying your stream is frozen, even oh. though this motherfucker owns multiple tech startups. I would think he could use clearer language when communicating communicating tech problems. The problem isn't that the stream is frozen; it's that the webcams are frozen. Now that I understand that, I see the problem it's not gonna happen again thank you dan you fucking moron shut okay? the fuck up like a bad date last night or no it's just this guy is so fucking stupid honestly <laughs> what are you laughing <laughs> to shut the fuck up pay attention to this person's very i am paying problem. attention i've already diagnosed your whole problem okay listen up Stop what's your name talking like you're talking in these messages that's step one no that's not step one you're talking is fine <laughs> stallion person hello yes okay the yellow person in picture three is toxic as a motherfucker how long do you guys date um, like two years. Okay, are you guys this... long distance at this point? Yeah, at this point, yes. Okay, you are fighting over the most stupid fucking thing in the world. Literally and he's nothing. like being like insanely yeah. insane, right? Like you said you were up and apparently, unless you were <laughs> lying, you said that it's hard to just call him because he doesn't always pick up. But after you said mm -hmm. you were up, I imagine you're probably waiting for him to call you or say he's going to call you, but he doesn't call you immediately. And mm -hmm. he doesn't call you for an hour. And now he's saying, oh, well, you played video games. You fucked around. Does he, what does he want you to fucking beg you to call him? Is that what he's waiting for? I don't know. Um, and and then he's blaming you around. like you could mm -hmm. initiate, but he could initiate a phone call too. Or just chill the fuck out. You're going to call him. I don't know. Okay. Because this is... I, yeah, this is weird. This is what I thought. I felt like I was going crazy with this conversation. I don't know if that's just me seeing things from my perspective. Yeah, I, this guy has. Wait, how old are you guys? Um, I I'm tw I'm tw I was like 25 then, and he was 24. This guy's a loser. You got to move <laughs> the fuck on. Okay. Yeah, this is okay. weird. the only the literally the only thing actually like with Dan with the language is like. It's really hard to understand you, which is going to take anyone that you're getting into a relationship a little while to get used to this communication style. No, they, pro style, they probably but it's built not up the to this. World. I bet they built yeah, up no, to this style of communication, right? Yes, this was like this was like two years into a relationship, but like five years into knowing. This. Okay. Because, okay. So here's like a thing. This took me a long time to learn, um, and it's going to take you some time to learn too. Okay. Um, if you are in a relationship and you feel like the communication is super fucking challenging, it's unless you have history of like be, being a bad communicator or you talk to a therapist and they told you some shit like there, something is wrong and it's probably not on your end it shouldn't be this hard to communicate with somebody like this guy's spamming at you in all caps waiting on you for an hour and you ghost me only to play stardew valley i'm sick of wasting my life waiting for you to limp fish then blame me for everything but it sounds like you said when you woke up and he never made an effort to call you he's like waiting for you to beg you like please call me like this is stupid as fuck why would it be this challenging like you guys are having like a seven page argument over why you didn't beg him to call you when he could have just called you and it sounds like you would have picked up the whole time so do you have any general tips for like if um, because of course you're going to be a bias in, in any relationship. You're going to view things from your perspective. Do you have any general advice for if you're in a relationship like this, where you're getting told something that is so different from your reality, how do you find some sort of objective grounding there where you can go, this is what I can glean from that, or this was just an insane situation. I'm glad I'm out. Uh, this is a really, so th this is really hard to answer because third parties are usually the best way to tell. But if you go to your friends, friends are inevitably mm. going to want to yes man you, right? Yeah. And most friends who really love you and have compassion for you are going to inevitably kind of project their stuff into your relationship as well. Mm. So like third parties are really tricky. The best is to find like a third party who you trust will like be pretty brutally honest with you, which is why to some extent, like having, this is where like having like the couple's therapist is the most helpful because you've got this third party who's not involved in the relationship who can kind of weigh in a little bit better on like reality and what they're seeing. Um, uh, yeah. Well, there's also I, some I, things that are just like clear, like these should be clear indicators. I'm yes. out. Fuck you. Never contact me again on <laughs> anything ever. I'm not joking. Keep the money. You weaseled it out of me so you deserve Like, these are things where it's like, if people are getting to this level, like, unless you've established, like, way, 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 way more background, this is pretty wild. Yeah.
especially uh, other red flags of like people being like kind of weird and like emotionally like not well is going to be like spam messaging you constantly, mm-hmm. especially like if you've got 10 hours in between responding, if they like respond like every like couple of hours and like really like pushing you, mm-hmm. um, that's always going to be like a bit of a flag. Um, did he communicate with you like this <clears throat> during the whole relationship? Um, no, this it was like, it was like, we're derailed to we, this. It derailed to this. We were friends for a while before this and things were totally fine. And when we started dating, it was like, he's a different person. Um, and because I already had like years of like, Oh, this is, you know, I know this person, I like them. Um, and I think I can be very biased in people's favor if I already like them. Um, so then I thought just, I must be, I must be like insane. Like, why is this? Which I ended up cutting off, but like, it took longer than it should have because of that favor that I gave him, the benefit of the doubt. Okay, hold on, wait. Oh my Jesus Christ. Hold on, I'm just reading more of this. this Which is... one are you on, Steve? I'm on the uh, number two. Which one are you doing? Did you read all of three? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I skimmed through it. I didn't read all of it. Why? Okay, damn. Okay. So you guys are arguing. Am I okay to read this? Are you okay with me reading this out loud? Yeah. Okay. Um, if, if a place or anything comes up, I won't say it, but like. Just to clarify, sorry, quickly. Are you, is he the J name and you the L name on the. Yeah. Two? Yes, okay. Yes. Okay, you say, this has never been about the money. I still have every sense of it, 100% of it, because I've held out hope that things will be, get better and I'll be able to come. They say, I don't care what you have or don't have. It's yours and it was always yours. You say, it was never mine. Uh, he says, I told you this because it was for your flight. You didn't want the flight. You say, I wanted the flight. He says, so you can use it for whatever else. That's how it works. And then you say, you sent me money the day before my family member died. My family member died and you made it so much harder by holding this over my head. This has been so hard. He says, I made it worse. You said, why couldn't you have been there for me? Yes, you really did. He said, I wasn't there for you. You said, I wanted your support. He said, I didn't support you. You said, holiday right after. How many times have you held that over my head? Not coming because of spending time grieving. How many times have you held that over me? The money right now that you said I scammed all of it out of you, that you won't take back that money. How many times have you held that against me? How many times have you argued with me? Said I was using my family member's death as a crutch. How many times have you made my life sucky by forcing the narrative that I don't want to spend time with you because you would rather believe I'm a gold digger? Um, I don't fucking want your money. He said, you think I'm the one that thinks poorly of you, but apparently I never supported you and made your life worse and wasn't there for you right now. Uh, in quotes, how many times have you done X to me as if you've never had any part, zero responsibility. This is like... This is some wild shit. Yeah, Wait, how many abusive relationships have you been in? Wait, and you have, you um, have children as well, yes? No, I have my nieces and nephews that I, um, that I take care of. I don't they're, have children of my own. Yeah, yeah, wait, what, is that, what does that yes, mean? Yes. They live with you, right? They live with you. Yes, they live okay. with me and my mom. Okay. Because my sister, my, so you see it there, my sister passed away. Yeah. Or, sorry, some of, uh, yeah. And um, so I have, like, her kids. I feel like it might be good to move on in this situation. No, for I don't, sure. I don't, I don't know how much there is to salvage. This no, is no, no, hold on, hold on. No, I agree this with is, that. It's whole important. They're exes now. They're exes already. Yeah, yeah so. no, oh, I'm okay. not with this person. They're and exes, I, but I this, is, this is a problem that you have that you need to fix, okay? I this agree. Person this is why I'm saying no. This person is not confusing. This person is beyond the pale, okay? Like, there is behavior in here in just this one thing. I haven't looked at any others, but like, like you. First of all, okay, here's, there's, here's some general rules for life. One-uppers mm-hmm. are trash. Don't ever be near a one-upper, especially if you're like genuinely grieving or venting about something that's really important to you. So mm-hmm. like you saying, um, like him saying, as if you're the only person on the planet who matters, you say, I was two minutes late for Valentine's Day, no. Him saying, you keep playing your guilt cards. Um, you saying, you are. Him saying, but my mom has brain cancer. And then you saying, because it didn't matter that I was going through a hard time, it mattered that I wasn't there. Um, him saying, I got out of the hospital from a suicide attempt less than three months ago, but keep playing victim. Um, keep acting like you're a fucking innocent god and everyone else is the problem. Mm. That'll work for you. You say that, like, this is, like, beyond the pale stuff. Yeah, every interaction, he's like, it, it's interesting to read. When you read your thing, right, you're decently calm. You're kind of seeing both sides. You might have your own biases. That's human. Mm-hmm. Um, and the entire time he responds, any olive branch you offer, any conciliatory language you use, he just shoves it back in your face and like is always going for the kill shot and always going to prove like how you're fucking wrong. And just to be clear, like this isn't how healthy relationships work. Um, sure. 
So I'm really sorry that you're like in this situation, but like in the future going forward, the moment that you're starting to like have conflict with somebody, like ideally the goal should be even in tense moments, you should like step away. And at some point when you reconcile back together, like if you offer an olive branch, most healthy relationships, there'll be some level of like taking that and offering it back. There's not going to be one person trying to be somewhat conciliatory and the other person like... Like there's nothing worse than if you say, Hey, I'm really sorry for doing this. And then the response is, yeah, you fucking should be. That's super, super inappropriate and unhealthy. Um, there's like, there's no winning. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I think, I think what I'm getting from this is, is, um, trust my gut more and to look out outside, um, kind of advice if that feels necessary. Have you, were there any friends that you were communicating with about this relationship or do you have anybody that you talked to about this type of stuff? Yeah, after it got, like, to this point, for sure. Like, this was already after we had broken up. Um, okay, and what was the, um, what, what was the response from friends about this? Um, so I didn't, I never sent, like, screenshots, because I felt like, I don't know, I felt like that was, like, an abuse of privacy. But you I would, I, 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 I... This is something I would recommend um, for everybody listening. <laughs> um, you should always have, like depending on how many friends you have, one or two or three, you should always have like one or two really close friends that you can mm -hmm. share everything with, literally everything with. Um, it's really important for doing sanity checks and it's good to have at least one person to have the full context of things so that when something crazy mm -hmm. happens, you don't have to be like, oh, I, wanna, I wanna talk to somebody about this, but like I'd have to catch them up on so much. Um, now, when I say that, be careful. Don't tell all of your fucking friends problems with your relationship because all of your friends will hate your significant other. That will always happen. Don't ever do that. But you should at least have one person that you trust. It's like, listen, I'm gonna vent with you about a lot of things. Like we've got a deeper level of trust for your best friend, a really good friend, a family member, maybe, um, stuff like that. That's, that's super important for sanity checks because I have a hard time believing, and I know it can suck because friends can be biased, but I think mm -hmm. any friend would look at stuff like this and be like, bro, you have to get the fuck out of here. Like this dude is actually like a schizoid monster. Yeah. Like. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, that's showing what, your friends the objective stuff is going to be the most useful, right? Because yeah. then, then they're not going to be as inclined to yes man you because they can just actually see the material. Telling your friends like stories is going to be more like tricky, but mm -hmm. like, yeah, <clears throat> th like this was especially towards the end, like beyond the pale. I think going forward, probably what you need to figure out is like, what boundaries did you fail to establish mm -hmm. earlier? Um, because it seems like, like he went into the, and I'm not blaming you for his behavior. Sure, He's no. responsible for his behavior, but you have to figure out like what went on that. Like I allowed myself to be in a relationship mm -hmm. where like I got treated in this way. Right. And so like mm -hmm. looking at that and being like, what are my non-negotiables? What are the boundaries I need to establish? And like, how do I establish boundaries? Like, how do I be, how, how do I like essentially like defend myself and like have my space, um, is like mm -hmm. super, super important, uh, for going into your next relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then sorry, just one more thing, because God no, damn, sorry. I just keep reading these. You, you can't, you, people should almost, people should very rarely if ever be tearing you down like this. Like, I'm reading about this. Did you read the third one, Dan, the D&D &D scheduling? Yep, going like, fucking nuts. Yeah. Some of these messages, like, um, can you take special effort next week to not be a slow kid? Like, starting on time, <laughs> we started five minutes late due to group chats and preamble. Like, some of these messages, like, um, it doesn't feel good and you know it doesn't, but you're also the one that allows it to drag. I think it's just a personality flaw that you have where you just let time fly by without like doing anything. And then you said you apologize to him. And then he's like, I don't want your apologies. I want to play D&D &D with the group. Like, geez. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, there's... I, think I, I think a problem is coming too is that I just, I grew up very, very, very religious and I didn't have relationships. And then also like a lot of, like early responsibilities so i'm like late to catch up to because i had mm. a, a late start so i had mm. relationships before this but they're all like wholesome like religious you, relationships this might be too personal you don't have to answer if you don't want to um was did you have a bad relationship with your dad i i mean he's a wall i oh, never no. yeah i have no relationship with my dad okay and there were never any men in the house around. sure okay mm -hmm. um it, what about your mom does she treat you okay or um I think I, I think I have a good relationship with my mom, but she's like bipolar, so we, I, ups and downs like this is something I'm very familiar with. Like you're a caretaker. The fact that, yeah, yeah the fact absolutely. That you hesitated to say yes. I feel like it feels to me like you probably take a lot more negative input from people than you should. Um, that's the only reason I ask is because like, I feel mm -hmm. like if you've had healthy relationships modeled for you in life, um, <clears> like <throat> because you were still dating during this D and D thing, right? Uh, yeah. I, I, like I could be wrong, but I, I think that there are messages here where I think if I sent stuff like this to Melina, I think she would actually just break up with me after four years. Like, so, so like this last mm -hmm. line of messages, 
No, fuck you and fuck talking. I wish you'd actually do something for once. Ideally before it's this bad, but you never do. So why the fuck am I even here? There's nothing to talk about. You majorly fucked me. You accept no responsibility, blame me. And now you're pretending to care rather than preventing it or working on it. You'll use your big words and then go back to being a cunt because you're all talk. This is like beyond the pale yeah. shit. Like that's, these are uh, things, yeah. that's like, you see this one time you're like, ha, see ya buddy. Like what the fuck? Like this is like, and you still dated after this, right? Like this was during your relationship, right? It's hard to remember timeline, but that was very close to the breakup, if anything. Sure. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I would say that like relationships require work, and they do. <laughs> and there are definitely ups and downs to relationships. <laughs> if anybody knows that, I do. But like, if your partner is making you feel like a trash human being, is like going in on you like that, like mm -hmm. unless there's like a very crazy specific fight or something going on, maybe um, that type of stuff is like beyond the pale. Like it's too much. You just have to be like, this is not worth it for me. You have no respect for me, and it also kind of shows that you have no respect for yourself because if you're letting people yeah. treat you and talk to you this way like yeah that don't don't accept stuff like that but yeah, yeah it's it sounds like you've been like in this caretake role kind of your whole life um and i feel like a lot of people who are in caretake roles kind of learn to ex like they they learn to expect basically as like minimal as possible and they'll take like a lot of shit that they probably shouldn't mm -hmm. um which is like on one hand like you know i'm sure you're an incredibly compassionate person and that's great um, but like when you, when you're raised religious as well, right. Especially as like a woman in a religious space, like you're kind of taught to like have like as minimal yeah. boundaries as possible to be as quiet as possible and to be as passive. Like when he basically like attacks you ruthlessly, your response was to apologize, which I, I understand. Like, I'm not shitting on you for that, but it's like, you don't need to be apologizing in that situation. Like he's the one being incredibly, like incredibly toxic. Um, and so there's a couple, like some things I would really recommend is like some assertion assertiveness training. Cause like being able to communicate your boundaries means knowing your boundaries. And if you've been like yeah. raised religious and a caretaker, you probably don't even know quite what those are, or, like what your actual needs are. Cause you've never even been in a space where like you can necessarily ask for them. So mm -hmm. like figuring out those things will probably be really fruitful because there is people that will want to be in a relationship with you, with you that do want to like love on you and like treat you well. Um, you just have to know how to ask for these things. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you, guys. Oh, uh, you're not dating anybody now, right? Are you? No, no. I specifically after this, I was like, okay, um, I need to slow down and figure out what went wrong, mm -hmm. and um, work on like whatever is causing me to get into relationship. Yeah. And okay. I'm yeah. trying not to get mindful. Yeah, fit, you definitely need to figure that out, like what you're looking for. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Good luck. Going on, Salian. Good luck. Wait, did that? Did it sound like it was hitting her on the end? That wasn't supposed to be that way, right? Right. I got that feeling pretty hard. Shut the fuck up, you fucking loser. Okay, never mind. Hello, hello. Yo. Yo. All right. Cashew, age 23, sex, cis male, pronouns, he, him, sexual orientation, straight, employment status, employed, housing status, living alone. Problems? Problem relating to finding similar interests in her line no screenshots all right yeah so um it, it turns out she wasn't lying she just uh she misunderstood what i was trying to get across but here's kind of the situation at hand so we've been dating for about a year um and so during the relationship you know it was kind of choppy at first but it, it took her a long time she has never been in a relationship before i've been in like three semi-serious but this is kind of like my first like serious relationship um and so like some of the hard things that i kind of had to go through was getting her to open up and get out of her shell and stuff because she was super awkward at first but now that i've gotten there and now we're trying to like we're working on like trying to do more stuff together and uh you know kind of form bonds but um i'm having to like i just graduated college and i'm having to leave to go work a full-time job and so we're gonna have to do some long distance stuff but like kind of what i'm having problems with is finding things to relate to because i kind of grew up with internet culture and stuff like that so it's kind of finding things to kind of you know relate and kind of keep conversation going between one another and kind of keep that you know interest with one another alive but we do have some similar interests dan yeah you have a wife who has incredibly different interested in lifestyles in you what how the fuck do you make that work i feel like you will find things that you guys both enjoy doing but you also have to be open to trying things that 
you think might be boring, you find out they, they can get interesting. Um, so it, you just have to expose yourself to do it. Like with a lot of this shit, 90% of it is just going out and doing something versus like being like, oh, I'm not going to enjoy that or I'm not going to enjoy that. So that's like, that's the biggest thing is is seeing what they care about and seeing if there's any elements of that that you um, you could possibly get behind and, and try. So I, w- I would go from that, but um Holy yeah, shit, I, I that just... makes me feel a lot better because I would recently we started watching one of her things growing up that she really liked was Doctor Who, and I fucking like hate it sometimes. But there's a few episodes, and the special effects are nice. Um, also, we relate. We like kind of the same movies and stuff. We like the hardcore action movies. We recently went and saw Bullet Train, which was really fucking good. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, man, sometimes it's really it's aggravating because I've had women that I've had platonic relationships to. And it's kind of like, you know, we'll go back and forth with references and stuff. And it's kind of nice having somebody that kind of understands that stuff, but having somebody that's kind of out of that realm, it's like, Oh fuck. Yeah. You wouldn't get that. Or like, I'll say something like a reference or something. And like, she won't get it at all. You know, the other, the other thing is you can actually bond doing shit that both of you guys hate as well. Um, or, or don't know, like, you guys can be like, hey, why don't we go do some do something today? And whatever it is, it could be something that neither of you knows if you'll enjoy or not, but you go do it. And even if, you know, either one of you will like it and the other one will be there for the ride or like both of you will hate it. And that's like a moment of yourself, like just trying something there. So I think it's just important to like try things together because it's not really about what you're doing. It's about doing it with the other person more than anything else. So Damn. also, here's just like a quick question. Uh, I had to learn this recently. Do you have a do you have a lot of friends? Yeah, I do. I have really, really good friends. Oh, okay. It, so, actually, this isn't necessarily true, but there are different... You, you don't have to do... Well, how much, light, how much time do you and your girlfriend spend together? Um, so, recently, we haven't... We only can spend, like, so much time because she's doing, like, three jobs right now in school. Jesus. Um, okay, well, the two jobs she's doing are kind of, like cake jobs i would say because like one of them's just babysitting basically an office job um all she has to do is like she works in the college um so she has a writing job which she only has to do like every two weeks like an article um she has an office job that she does and then she works at a hardware store which they're not super the hardware store is the most stressful one because she works with coworkers that are like assholes sometimes Mm -hmm. but um other than that, like she does a really good job of communicating and stuff. It's my part. I'm usually the more busy, busy one because right now I'm doing a systems administrator job in the city and also like doing, um, I'm kind of running my own IT business on the side. Um, so we're both like super busy. So like, I'm also kind of looking for advice, you know, to kind of like do some long distance stuff and how to keep like the, you know, spark alive during that, because like we've been in a really good relationship and it's not like it's fallen apart. Um, so it's kind of like, how do I keep this relationship going as strong as it is and kind of keep that bond going is like what I'm like trying to ask before I, you know, run off and like not see her for maybe a month on end or something. You guys don't live together, you said, right? How far away are you from each other? Oh, shit. It's about to be, right now, it's only like an hour, but um, here in a little bit, it's going to be like six hours. Sheesh. Have you ever had long distance friendships or like any other form of long distance anything? Yes, I have. Okay. Uh, How did those friendships work out for you? Like, were Um, you able to maintain them pretty well? Yeah, for the most part. Um, I've lost a few during that, but they weren't super strong friendships. They were more like, hey, we were hanging out at college, college buddies, and then they got married, moved away, something like that, and the kind of we broke contact. But I wouldn't say I ever burned bridges or anything, and I still have like friends that I'm not I don't see a lot, but I'm still super close to. Yeah, okay. So you know how to like communicate and stuff long distance. Um, I, main thing I would say is like probably try to make sure your long distance time apart is as short as possible. Um, like you don't want to extend it and then doing really intentional, like you're both going to need to start like booking off weekends or something like that. Like however much you want to negotiate so that you guys can like see each other in person, like fly up or drive up or something like that. So once you guys are long distance, you're going to need to be really, really intentional with like squaring away a certain portion of time that both of you can manage to see each other in person decently, regularly. Um, that would be my, yeah, she that would be my recommendation. Like five months of college left, and then she's okay, perfect. with me. Probably, perfect. So it'll yeah. be one of those deals. So awesome. Okay, awesome. Well, that answers a lot of my questions. You guys have a good time. Uh, good luck, Destiny, with that whatever the hell happened this morning. <laughs> oh, that's all good here. 
We're all about fun here. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Yep. Have fun. Yep. Wait, for you guys, how long into a relationship would you be before considering doing, like, long-distance stuff? Oof. You know, long distance doesn't work. That's the end of it there. But like, right, mm -hmm. and it would have to be temporary too. Like, yeah. let me give you an example. What about if my wife got some fucking insane, like, hey, we're going to give you $5 million a year to come be uh, a psychologist in Antarctica. And she's yeah, like, this obviously. is obviously right, right. No, amazing. but like, what about if it's for three years straight and she can't come back? That's like a real thing to consider. So I feel like there has to be an end date. Like, uh -huh. I would never do long distance without an end date. If it's like, hey, I have to move to California for work. It's like, okay, well, when are you coming back? It's like, oh, well, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like you can't do that no matter what. There has to be an end date. And um, as far as how long into a relationship, I guess you really play it by ear. It's how, you know, how much do you love this person? How, how desperate are you? Um, but, you know, most of them don't work. That should be fucking obvious, you know? Um, I think... Yeah. Um... I feel like something that Dan said a while ago, um, I don't apply this to all my life, but I do apply it to like relationships. I think if I'm dating somebody and it's long distance, my goal is to get to the move-in stage basically as quickly as possible for two reasons. One is because then you find out if the relationship actually is going to work or not because you don't know until you live together. But two, um, I think that when you're in a long distance scenario, you are setting yourself up for one person to fuck up every time. Like... If somebody's long distance, it's easier to meet other people, to hang out with people, to do casual things with people. Like, it just seems like such a recipe for disaster that people will inevitably like, oh, I cheated or, oh, I met a dude and blah, blah, blah. And like relationships, a big part of them are like the physical closeness and everything of being in a relationship. So if you don't have that with your partner, it feels like you're just waiting for somebody to fuck up and it's going to happen at some point. That's, that's what I think. Yeah, I would never like, basically to me, long distance should always be like an unfortunate circumstance that comes up that you guys like have to navigate. I don't think it should ever be like something that's like intentionally planned for. This is why like in general, I'm very hesitant about like starting a relationship long distance. Um, I just think it's really hard to make those things work. And then, yeah, I would agree trying to like see each other as soon as possible, um, especially if you're able to commit to like going up on weekends and stuff regularly to see each other to make it like not really long distance. That would be... But I would yeah. recommend to people, but money. So. Unless you have like, uh, like Dan said, if there's like a planned timeline to move in, yes. it's okay. But if it's just like, oh, cool. Like I met this guy and then I went back home. And when are you going to move in? He's like, oh, I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. Like that's always, I think you're just like setting yourself up to get fucked. All right. Do you want the next one? Yeah, bring him in. Easy. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hey. Good. I'm doing good. How are you guys? We're doing great. Talk to us. Hold on. Wait. We what? need. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. 23. Cis male. He, him. Straight. In college. Living with roommates. Problem. My friend's girlfriend flirts with me a lot. All right. Yeah. I, can, I can dig into this one. All right. How, first off, you trying to get with this bitch or what? I be mean, honest. Okay. Be honest. Honesty. Well, doesn't... okay. Well, so rationally, I know I shouldn't, right? But uh, the heart okay. wants or the heart wants. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, the dick wants what the dick wants. That's what we're talking about here. I smelt it right from the beginning. All right. So listen, how much do you like this? I'm going to give you the. How much do you like here. the friend? Yeah. How much do you like this friend? Okay. So I think that I should. Wait, do you it. have a girlfriend too? Yeah, yeah. Also okay. that. Jesus. Um, heart wants what the heart right. wants. <laughs> No, but Bro, so we're in an open relationship. Here? We're in an open relationship. So it's not like that. But <laughs> the problem, hold on. The problem question. Me, wait, wait. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Hold uh, on. That doesn't uh -huh. mean anything. Here's the question Would your girlfriend care if you fucked this other girl? No. She wouldn't care at all? Uh, I, mean, I think she'd what share with the feelings? fact that like, she has a boyfriend, but she wouldn't care that I, you know, in general. You know well, I, mean? well, well I didn't feelings. ask you in general, did I? You said you were in a relationship. I know you feel in general. I'm asking, would your girlfriend get mad if you? I mean, like, I've, told, I've told her about this. And what did she say? She was like, I mean, I don't think she cares that much. What did what? she say? Yeah, what'd she say? I don't, I don't remember. I could, I could. Uh, how convenient! Come on, <laughs> oh, okay. 
something. Okay. Wait, are you in an open relationship where you can also catch feelings for other people? Just to clarify, like what's off, what is, what is your guys' boundaries and rules? I mean, I, I think it's just as long as like, I'm not going for an active relationship with some, someone else. It's, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Hey. Well, so are you asking us for tips on how to get this girl or no, are you asking no. us? To- well, so the problem for me is like, I feel like, cause I don't, I don't want anything to happen rationally, but I'm just, I'm worried that if I see her again, I'm not going to act rationally. What, what are you asking us? Okay. I, I you know. hold on. Give, yeah, wait, yeah, wait. Give Dan advice very quickly if we, if we don't get more clarity. Well, no. It, I, I, it, I, well, I, hold on. Wait. I, There's. You don't need advice. You already know everything here, right? If you see this chick again and she comes on really strong, you're gonna fuck this girl. 100. percent We already know that. Everybody here knows that. You know it. So, what are you asking us? You know that you shouldn't see her again because that's what's gonna happen. You already know that. So, what do you, what are you really here for? Do you want us to make you feel I, better I, about it or? No, because like, so I I do like it. So. Last time it happened, um, I said I said to her that it was kind of making me uncomfortable because the, the the problem is so we're together and her boyfriend is like right there and she's like going for it right in front of him right and like I told her that that specifically was making me uncomfortable and she's like she said uh, what he doesn't see can't hurt him and I was like that's fucked up but also kind of true and and then we just ended up like continuing what we were doing and he was just right there watching and it's just like a fucked up situation but you're wild he, did man. he you're see fucking crazy yeah <laughs> did I he have so. any yeah, feelings well, he did, about mate. it there was there was there was a there was a there was a part in the night where she was mm-hmm. she was making out with my girlfriend and i could see him watching it and he was like visibly upset and he like he did the thing where he he was like rubbing the back of her neck, so I'm I'm pretty sure that it was like this uh, signal uh. of like, please stop what you're doing. And she just like went harder, and then I was like, oh, this is really this is a really fucked up situation. I don't know how to handle it. Well, how much well, do you like your friend? <laughs> yeah, see, we all comes back to the meme answers. That's the real ones. Then all, how much do you like your friend, bro? Uh, I mean, he's, he's a good guy. We're not, like, close or anything. Well, okay, you gotta listen. <laughs> Bro, you're just looking for permission. You came here for permission. Yeah. Once. yeah, you know what? I'm gonna give it to you. Fuck it. Go. You know what? Because he's not Thanks, that man. good a friend anyways. Fucking do it. You know what? You know he's not that good of a friend. You don't know that. You I know that it's, he's not... friends' feelings. You won't be friends anymore. Just to be clear, if you're doing it, he's not your friend. And you're not his friend. Well, just he, to be wants clear. To, he wants to do it. What do you mean? Yeah, well, yeah but like, to you're also going to get, how, what, how intermingled is this whole friend group? Because it's going to be drama, too. It's, it's pretty into, it's pretty, it's, it's relatively intermingled. Yeah, you're going to, okay. going to be some huge well, drama. So, yeah. Are you, what are you, are you from New Zealand? Yeah. Yeah, there's not very many people down there, too, so your friend groups are limited, okay? <laughs> there's only five of you on the island, know each so. Other. You're basically... Uh, he was not going to, he's not your friend. And if you do it, he's definitely not your friend. And you might lose a bunch. Are most of your friends monogamous? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then you're going to lose other friends as well. Yeah. They're going to be a bad guy to them. You're going to be a bad guy to them. Yeah. You're putting a lot. So, this girl real hot. Is, is this? Yeah. Is the sex she, worth she, it? She is. Oh, dude, fuck it. Come on, bro. If she's worth your friendship group, go buck wild. No, stop. Okay, aware. these people are heathens. Hold on. I'm an enlightened C.S. Lewis reader now, okay? He's informing my whole world philosophy. But listen, okay? Can you not ask her, like, bro, listen, you're wild. I'd love to do this, but you got to break up with your boyfriend first. Could you make that ask? Would she do it? Um... He'd still be a home wrecker. Yeah, that's Everyone still, listen, yeah. If it's a No, day, hold it on. It would be way... Record. The no, day so before and the day there. after are big differences. Okay, nah, not as nah. much to monogamous you're delu- people. You're delusional. You like, guys, not to monogamous see, people. The difference between you fucking my wife today and then my wife leaving me tomorrow and then fucking you is fucking zero. You're, you're out of pocket. You're you're insane. So wrong. No, everyone okay. knows something's going on beforehand. Just so this you is know, how monogamous people see it. I'm these just two, be clear. So these are the two unexperienced ones, and I'm telling you as a player. Okay. Oh, yeah. Play it a playa, okay? Uh-huh. It might sound retarded as fuck, but Your she dumped his too. boyfriend and fucked that dude the next day. It still might look pretty bad to people, but it is nowhere near as bad as he fucked her while they were still dating. People will view that as fucking worlds apart. 
if they want to be your friend, kind of, and the, the, the first one happens, like, man, it was kind of a little fucked up. You fucked her, you know, the day after. It's kind of weird. But if you fuck them no, while they're dating, fuckers, if you fuck them while you're dating, I'm him. giving you reality. She's going to leak him it if they get That's fine. After. That's still better. Right, they broke up listen. so that they could fuck. It's still way better than you fucked them right. while they're still it? dating, bro. What do you, what you're, you're, what do you think monogamous people are going to think if they see and she, if they come at her and they're like, what the fuck, Stacey? That was such a bitch move. And she's like, what do you mean? Breezy told me to break up with my boyfriend. Yeah. They're all going to fucking Because that's him. what you're supposed to do. You no, break up with them and then you fuck around. Yeah. No, you just don't get to do it at all. You're insane okay you're, if anything you're... i could sell the other one better i'd be like Listen, no oh night. my it was one these night are married I was, brains. I was, these are the I married drinking, brains talking uh, you know shit one I thing happened okay, i didn't need to that one you know <laughs> you i'm just saying the Listen, <laughs> mate at the end of your life when you're 85 years old and you're sitting there in your fucking rocking chair you're gonna regret the things you didn't knew do and getting with this fucking bitch is gonna be number one on your fucking no. list. it's yep. probably not it's it is like, number you know, one not Hugging your children a little bit more than oh you should ever something God. like that. You know I'm right. <laughs> Fucking go going, for it, man. Fuck it's those going to damage your relationships. If it's worth it, go for it. But I don't think it's a wise idea. You need to tell them. You tell you the girl, yo, we can hook up if you want, but you got to break up with your guy first. Tell her that, and then make sure she does it because she'll probably tell you she did and then lie about it. Nah. Um, that's what you should do. That's what you got to do. Okay. Why? Why make okay. her break up with him? When they might not even like, you know, go and do it. You know, there's a lot of other stuff. Just fucking see if you know. she should break up with him anyway. If nah. anything, he's gonna spend a favor there. What it sounds like fucking... she's looking to cheat regardless. So You're fuck delusion. it. Nah, just smash, bro. Go ahead, be a super smash, bro. You can do it. Good luck. It's a bad idea. Thank but, you so uh, you know, much, Dan. You're an adult. You can you can blow up your life. Go for it. <laughs> nah, I'll be fine. You're okay. You're young. You'll bounce back. Listen, don't do it. Do it. Fuck your friend. Don't do it. Don't do it. Listen. Don't do it. You gotta fuck your friend. Listen, Dan. Listen, my fellow Kiwi. Listen, my fellow Kiwi. Dan's trying to sell you on a. Hi. How many New Zealand meetups? Dan. Dan's trying to sell you. Dan's trying to sell you on some yeah no yeah shit. I'm trying to sell you on that yeah no shit. Okay. Trust me. Okay. Don't do it. Don't do it. How long have these two been dating? This girl and your friend. So since since they're in high school. Oh my god. Wait. How old are you guys now? Cannot ask the number. Twenty three. No. They're 33! 20, 23, 23. Oh, 23, 23, 23. 23. Okay. Right, that still, was, that's still like a five, six, seven year relationship. Yeah. Seven years? Yeah. What are you getting you, out of high school? If you ask her to break up and she leaks those DMs and you guys fuck the day after they break up, you're still going to be fucked. It is oh, actually different. You're so it, wrong. It makes him look like a goddamn saint. It makes him look like a saint. No, she no. can't fuck her no. ever if he's going to be a saint. You're there so wrong. No, way. no, you're so wrong. He's, she's like, I want to fuck you, I want to fuck you. And he's like, listen, if we fuck, we can, but you got to break up with your guy first oh yeah he looks so good suck. there he actually looks so good there because a lot of guys would be like yeah fuck it let's go that's what a lot of guys would look okay. like it would actually right. make the him look way better it would, him girls, better it would make him look better it would make him look better in the group will still kind of think if they're yeah. monogamous girls they'll th- still think you're kind of a shit bag but they might be into it as well so no. you know, it would make him look better it would hey you're, i'm not gonna fuck with you while you're still dating your my boy while you're still dating the guy okay not gonna happen it would you i mean to be clear you shouldn't do anything at all. That would make you look But the there's best. no difference. Well, there's no actually. difference for the other two, honestly. That would be the most ethical thing to do. So if, if you're going to be a bad guy, fucking be a really bad guy. You know what I mean? Don't do anything <laughs> in life half-assed. Go fucking all in if you're going to do it. Be like, yeah, I smashed. And yeah, I was tight. What of it? You know? Like, okay, well, that's what you the council has spoken. I'm outvoted one to two, okay? But I'm telling you, okay? Get her to break it off with him first. Get her to break it off with him first. Nah. Fucking YOLO, motherfucker. You only live once. <laughs> Go Love's for it, off, man. <laughs> in fact, don't even use a condom. All right, that's the no, thing. Then, then, then you're locked in. You're locked in. Then you're locked in. It's like, yeah, good action. All right, good luck. Let us know how it goes. I will. Oh, man, just unbelievable, guys. Mm. What I was saying, it's a bad idea. You guys are degenerates. Right. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Hello. All right. Yad, where's our fucking dossier on this motherfucker? Hold on, bro. We're waiting for our info. Of course. All right. Got it. Myris. Okay. Myris the virus. Age 20. Cis male. He, him. Straight. In college. Living with roommates. Problem. I have trouble with getting close to people too fast. Aww. That's not awe. That's like one of the <laughs> least attractive things in the world. That's such a horrible thing, he's, man. He's, he's a kind soul. 
Oh my god. Uh, I I don't know. Okay. Maybe I misclicked or whatever, but I'm bisexual, not straight. I don't know if that's super important. Oh, okay. it's not. Okay. Yeah. It's not. Okay. Okay. Um. So I guess in more detail, essentially, um, what happens is like I'm, you know, friends with a girl or whatever, and it's going. It's like a normal friendship. And then there's just this point where suddenly, like, she starts opening up, like, a lot, and I reciprocate, and, like, the intimacy of the friendship goes, like, shoots up really fast. Um, and essentially, I think I real I understand why it happens, and I understand the problem, but I don't know how to, like, not do it, right? Um, so, if... So, I mean, which part do you guys want to go through first? Like, why it happens, what the problem is, or... How old are you again? Uh, 20. How many have you been in any real relationships yet? Yeah, I've been in one and this situation has happened like three or four times. Oof. Who um I kind of have this problem so which one of you wants to take it? <laughs> okay. Um Dan any words of wisdom? I wasn't paying attention. Are these wait, curious. Are these with girls you've known for a while? Um <laughs> Three of them were with girls I've known for a while. One is with like was with like uh, was a newer relationship. Are they into it? Just to clarify. Yes. So what? Like okay. So what happens is basically I'm. Um, they. Uh, this is like my perception, of course. Um, but I think what happens is basically at some point they open up about something. I think I'm a pretty good listener. I'm pretty good at like talking to people about their problems and stuff. Um, so they get a lot of positive feedback from it and they want to continue opening up. And I think I also kind of open up sort of to like balance it out. So it's, it doesn't feel like they're just dumping onto me. Right. Um, okay. So yeah. Yeah. And it Hold kind on, of just, just real quick. Out. I don't believe that, but go ahead. Don't believe you just got, you just got called out. I don't think you're opening up to balance out. I think you're opening up because if they're being vulnerable with you and you're being vulnerable with them, you're creating a deeper attachment. I don't think it's just to make them not feel awkward, but. Um, like, I'm sure I think that definitely to. happened like the first time, um, mm -hmm. but I think, um, at least this is something I've noticed is like the first time it happened, I felt like I was kind of doing it in a way where we're both like codependent, right? Which wasn't good. And okay. that's where like, that was like the actual relationship and everything. Um, and I think the later times I've, at least I've noticed after some time, like, obviously I don't want to like talk as if I'm their therapist or whatever, but like they're able to be more like independent and I'm like talking to them in such a way where they're, I'm encouraging them to reach out to other people, for example, as well. I'm encouraging them to like, you know, talk to maybe whoever else they're having this brought whatever issue with. Right. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'm encouraging them to like see a therapist or whatever, depending on the situation. Right. You have any screenshots of any of these messages or no? Uh, I didn't feel comfortable sharing, but I mean, I can like, I can like read out some, I guess. Um, specifically is right there back. Like, good luck Fuck you, any man. particular sort of thing you want to see or you said three girls were girls that you'd known for a long time and one girl was one that you just met yeah um, um can i, I would just met one can i share with you the the latter's wisdom um <clears throat> okay this is a guiding principle for life real quick okay something i feel mm -hmm. very strongly about okay mm -hmm. Okay, close your eyes and listen to me for a moment. Ready? Yep. Okay. I believe that men have one ladder that they put every woman on. And women can cr climb up the ladder and fall down the ladder. But ultimately, I think men are generally willing to date and fuck almost every woman they know. They're all on the ladder. Sometimes you got to drink a lot to get down on that ladder, but more or less everybody is on that ladder. I think generally that's how men view women. So if you're a man and there's a woman and you're getting closer and closer and opening up more, she's like climbing up the ladder for you. I believe that's how men see relationships, and I think that's how men think women see relationships. Women are way different, okay? Women have two ladders. On one ladder, they've got guys they would consider fucking and dating, and on the other one, they have friends. Okay. And one of the big issues is that when a woman is kind of sees you as a friend, you can't make that jump from the friend ladder to the romantic ladder. It's almost Oh, you're yes. leaving too? Yeah, go ahead. Yep. All right, go ahead and leave. Oh, this is Jesus. You to okay. Test, if Steven, Kyla leaves, I leave. Ask. Just oh, okay. make an ask, Steven. What? Make an ask. What do you want? I want you to get the fuck out because you want to leave. I don't want you to be here if you don't want to be here. 
I, you know what? I have things to do. If you have conversations uh, you'd like to have, do. just like Bye. yesterday, you just message me. You, what the fuck do you want? And you just fucking fall asleep. I don't know what you want. What do you want? Women sort men like that very effectively, but for men, it's in fucking possible to sort women like that, or it's very, very, very difficult. So, yeah. if that is the case, if you're talking with a woman who's getting more comfortable with you. You might think that she's getting more into you and more romantically attached, but if that's not something that kind of happened at the outset of the relationship, and it, it's, you think it's developing like a year in or months in, it, oftentimes for her, it's not. She's just getting closer to you as a friend and not actually developing that romantic attachment. I feel like that stuff usually comes on pretty fast, in my opinion. Um, and then Ira Dagger sure. goes there she wants. Uh, I would say I would mostly agree with it. I think that there are some times, for example, there's definitely some men who do make the leap from the friendship to the romantic, but it's typically like a much more long-term thing. Um, and a lot of times like women, like these can be some, like some of the best relationships, but I would agree that it's decently rare, right? Like most guys that you, something as significant a woman, would have to happen or something. It would be yeah. quite significant. Like oftentimes and sometimes it's like through like some like major like life issue that she's had that he'll like move over to the romantic lens. Mm -hmm. But I would agree. Most guys, when you meet him, once you've decided, yeah, he's just going to be a friend, you tease that apart within like two to three weeks. Um, and after that, there's not a lot of moving unless something drastic changes. Like you change your life, you change a massive amount of your appearance potentially, or something in her life has a drastic change. Like she goes through some sort of situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess to, to be clear, like, when I entered into these relationships, I didn't, like, enter with the intention of, like, you know, uh, getting in a relationship. Or, sorry, when I enter into these friendships, I didn't enter in with the intention of getting into a, a relationship with this pers these people. Like, the first two people, they actually asked me out before, and I rejected them the first time, right? Um, the the third person, I, uh, I actually never asked them out, except this one time kind of accidentally, and I can explain that more. <laughs> Um, and the last person was, I actually asked her out, um, but what's your concern in all this? Like, what's the, like, you're worried that essentially you're getting like too overly close and like, are you worried that you're essentially becoming like codependent in a lot of your relationships or that you like encourage that by your dynamics? Like, what's your concern yeah. here? Yeah. So I feel like the problem is that the relationship is just very unstable because once you've talked through all of like your problem your individual problems like you don't have anything else to actually in that relationship right it's just talking when you guys are sad and there's nothing else right um and i think that's a problem because i ideally i'd want relationships which are more than just talking about each other's problems right okay okay yeah you're like keep trauma bonding uh as like your more main form of like relationship formation which i would argue is like yeah probably not the best way to form a relationship this is the thing about like kind of like what i would call like trauma bonding where essentially like i'm not saying like you're act like you're basically like the main form of your connection is kind of talking about all the ways you've been like fucked up and messed up in your life and your struggles in life and where you've been really sad. But that's kind of like the start and the end of your relationship as well. These relationships kind of mind fuck you because they're really fast because it's really nice getting that validation. And it feels like you guys are actually really deeply connected. But then once you're right, once a lot of these issues are kind of result and you know it, and they start to improve, you realize that there's actually nothing more to that relationship. All it was, was fixating on like the negative stuff, which is why a lot of trauma bonded relationships burn really fast and deep. And then they kind of fizzle and they have like a lot of like issues afterwards where there's like not as much of a connection. There's lots of weird fighting. Um, and just like problems begin to like kind of emerge as a result of this. Yeah. And I think like, I understand why it happens or at least why it happens for me. Um, basically the first relationship I was in, I was kind of I was a very, I was a lot more of a, uh, I, I don't want to say manipulative, but I, I like, I felt like I had to like hide a lot of my true like feelings and whatnot with my friends and things like that. And basically that after that relationship, I almost like completely flipped on that where I'm like very comfortable, like being open with almost anybody and especially like with my close friends. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think like, as a result, I like when I express something, I'm you know, fine with it. Um, and it's not like that. I guess it's not that big a deal to me now. Um, whereas for the other person, I think it can be like a bigger deal. Um, There's huge. A, you have to be, yeah. it's important to read social cues on what you could or should or shouldn't open up with. 
Uh, because if you're opening up with like really intense stuff really early on, you're going to produce like pretty negative effects socially. That's it's important to be aware of what is socially acceptable for that. I th yeah. it, what I hear is going on is actually it's a very unique thing that very few people come across. I had a very good friend that had this issue in his relationship where he could get deep with people within like two hours and this person would be like holy shit i've never told anyone this in my entire life this is the greatest conversation i've ever had you know me better and they would very quickly come to view uh, my friend as their best friend but for him it was like every other conversation was like that like mo and so it wasn't nearly as novel and intense so then there was like this intense connection and i think like Probably what would be helpful for you is to analyze how you actually go into conversations. Cause I would guess that the way you're mirroring them and asking questions, you always kind of lead into like the deeper, heavier yeah. stuff. And you're never suggesting conversations that are lighter. You're never doing like witty banter. You're never like talking about ideas of being like, Hey, like, you know, like Trump's kind of weird or like whatever you want to talk about. Right. Um, and so your entire relationship is being tested on only one grounds, which feels really deep and intimate for that person. Cause it is deep and intimate, but intimacy, like you need more than just one thing. Uh -huh. Um, yeah. so I would like just try to talk and like bring other elements into your conversations. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then you, then you have something to talk about. If you guys both like talking about ideas or you both like talking about sports, it'll never run out because current events never run out. No. You just got to remember relationships, you know, when, when think of it, like, going to a, uh, a flea market or a yard sale and you go there and it's like, you really don't want to haggle. You just want to be like, listen, this thing's $2. I'll give you $1.50. Okay. You don't want to go and do the back and forth, but you have to understand that that's part of the game. You cannot sidestep that process of doing that. So when you're in these relationships and you just want to, you have to realize that it's a relationship. You're playing a game. You can't do it. All right. You have to, you got to go and you got to do it. You understand? You have to, you can't expose too much. You have to treat it like you're trying to buy some used car parts, okay? So that's my advice to you moving forward. Keep that in your mind. It's my, everything in your body is telling you to do something different. You have to remember that you're trying to buy a used muffler for your 1997 Nissan Altima, okay? All right, yeah. It's um, hard. It's not okay. easy. It's not easy, but you have to remember to do that. Right. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's all I, I had to talk about. Thanks for the, thanks for the advice. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> See you guys. Wow. I thought that was really good advice, honestly. Some of my best stuff ever. It's true, yeah? you know? It's, it's really true. What's the grass behind you, by the way, Dan? I, I keep doing? looking at the at grass. your space around. It's your the aesthetic behind you is just so interesting. Every time there's a pause in between, I have like a new question about the things around you. There's like a plant behind you. Are there's you three of them. Cutting out for you, her It's because the guy is every time he touches his mic, it's cutting her out. Sorry, I was sorry. Yeah, I was telling shut you the fuck mistake. up. She's trying to ask me a question. <laughs> Start over. About his grass. I, there's three plants mm -hmm. behind you. Are they grass? I'm just, or are they fake? They're fake. Oh, okay. Just my, like, just like my love for these colors. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. Sorry. All Dad, right. Are we, already, are we already off on the wrong foot? Okay, oh, yeah, Gangster. Yeah, yeah. That's your fucking name, Gangster. Okay, yeah, Gangster. Age 24, male, he, him, straight, employed. Oh, what type of gangster is this being employed? But that's all right. I don't know too much. Lives alone. Uh-oh. <laughs> Not a good look. But that's all right. What's your problem? Color is concerned his girlfriend is fucking other guys. No, just kidding. Color is concerned his girlfriend's guy friends are trying to sleep with her. Okay, so not as far away as I thought. She insists they're just friends. Okay. Not a Giga Chad moment. We're going to go through it. So. How are, we, how are we doing anyway? Are you okay? How are you We're doing? We're fine, dude. We're well, fine. He's obviously doing horrible because he's calling into this show. <laughs> so you know his <laughs> yeah. life. No, is fine. I've been listening. It seems like Steve, you and uh, Dan are the ones that need relationship counseling. Oh my um, God! We're living our best life out here. Dan is in a stable, amazing relationship, <laughs> and I'm living years. the chaotic love that I've always been looking for. So both yeah. of us are doing fine. You're the one over here that's worried about his fucking girlfriend getting fucking trained on by his no, boys. That's not true. Yeah, that's no, not true. That's about that Steve, you true. haven't even heard any of the context yet. I don't even. Oh, need to there's know. context. Concerned his concerned. girlfriend's guy friends are trying to sleep with her. She you know, you know insists they are just friends. You know how much concern I have that, that someone's trying to fuck gonna, my wife? Are way? you going to hit on your, on your I, girl? I'm not concerned about it. it says, I, I think that was a paraphrase by somebody else. Okay, okay. well, it seems like you're concerned, <laughs> but go is ahead. My, is my mic okay or am I a bit too loud or quiet? Yes. Um, right, it's it fine. Up. Hold on. On the back, are you using a Yeti or what kind of mic are you using? 
Just a uh, headset mic. Oh, gotcha. Because okay. okay. you need to turn the cope down a lot, but I guess you don't have that setting. So go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. You just oh, got. I didn't. I didn't even touch that. <laughs> it's all good. Go ahead. Tell us your problems. What do you got, dude? All right. Well, uh, I guess I'll start with a little bit about maybe me. So I'm. Uh, 24. <laughs> yeah. So in 1984, you were born. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Steve, I'm sorry. We're being really good at it. Right now. I'm sorry. It's not gonna work. Steve. Right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We're. I'm turning down. He's gonna. He's gonna start talking. So like my. My mom. <laughs> no, died. stop. Let him go. Go ahead. I was Sorry, born go at ahead. the ripe old age of zero. We're yep. good. All right. Do you guys want to get it out of your system or should we? Yeah, no, no. It's, we have it. It, it, it would be. Okay. It would be really funny. If this conversation is not about what, what we're trying to get out. It's about what we're trying to get into. Okay. You're what about what you're trying to get into? Oh, Steve. That was uncomfortable. That was absolutely so bad. Dan's still writing his backstory. Bring it. Okay. Bring it back. Okay. Go ahead. What do you got? All right. So I'm I'm 24. I feel weird now kicking this off. This <laughs> no, no, you're, it's not weird. We're serious now. Go I, ahead. You're I, I work in I work in civil engineering, like okay. uh, coordinating business performance. So I deal with like auditing. My girlfriend's a doctor for the UK National Health Service. Okay. Um, I'm 24. She's 23. So I just thought you might want to put a. You context. can be a doctor at 23. That's yeah. Not- so if you, the if you UK, do a course can. at 18, and it's a five year course, you get a doctorate at the end, and you end up as a doctor, and you go straight in uh, uh, to being a doctor after maybe one to two weeks break. Jesus. Oh my it. God! Ne- remind me never to have a British doctor ever again. I'm all the shit I know about house. Just all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. What else? Don't worry, don't worry. Apparently, I won't be letting my girlfriend the doctor anyway. Need then because apparently everybody's trying to fuck her. Yeah. To Steve oh. Hey, I like okay. it. Self-deprecating humor. Good. No, I'm kidding. You're winning me Sorry. over. Let's go. Okay. So, uh, by the way, sh- shout out to my bold friend Jay. He's uh, in the chat. I just wanted. to Oh show my him. God! Get, oh, this isn't your go. To it. Okay. Sorry. I haven't included any screenshots. <laughs> I don't think do fuck your girlfriend um, at this point. Let's go. I haven't included much screenshots because what I want to discuss is like theoretical or discussions of um, uh, just generally how people should act in certain situations. I've I've included one, but it's sort of relevant to only one of the issues I bring up. Um, so context about my relationship is that. We'd both previously come out of serious relationships for multiple years. Um, I even lived with my ex-girlfriend um, before it went completely south. So her and I can be quite worried about even the most minuscule potential issues um, because we're worried about warning signs, you know, like red flags. Um, okay. Because we're quite, you know, we're quite anxious about things falling apart when you think they're good. Um, she said to me even that her last boyfriend, you know, was pretty much perfect for two years and then suddenly wasn't. Um, and uh, now i'm almost opposite to him in terms of traits and she's voiced that to me and she's worried is that a good thing because i'm not like the person that ruined shit for her or am i is it good that i'm different so there's basically three things that i've written down that have caused somewhat uncertainty or or at least questions for me and her um during the relationship so one was other guys in dms so uh she's just finished five years of medicine as i said and under doctor and moved into being a junior doctor. Um, she's very good looking, but at least subjectively to me. Like she's like, I would say like a nine out of 10, nine, 10, you know what I mean? I'd say a 10, but you know what I mean, objectively. Mm-hmm. Um, there's loads of obviously guys in the hospital in terms of doctors. It's a very male dominated hey, field. Dude, really need I'm not a very um, jealous guy, uh, honestly. I know you guys are gonna smile, but genuinely. But she's always telling me, hey, I've just joined. Um, there's loads of these guys being really nice to me today at work. They've bought me coffee. You know, they're talking to me. Um, they're asking for my number. They're adding me on Instagram and Facebook. Oh, they were wondering, oh, how's it going for your first few weeks? And she's stunning. So I was like, uh, she, she'd be like, oh, Charlie. I'm Charlie, by the way. This guy was so nice to me today. He was so welcoming. He was so willing to help me out. He's like 30. He's, he's you know, he took me for a coffee and he was chatting to me about, you know, whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, well, he probably fucking likes you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And she was like, uh, well, no, Charlie, guys don't really, you know, guys just, they just want to be my friend. I was like, okay. She knows. First of all, she knows. She might not. She might not. Okay, no, no, honestly, Dan, I understand. Women are very fucking stupid. So it's incredibly possible that she has no idea. I understand how this works, right? So I'm I'm gauging her conversation. But she genuinely (laughs) thinks these guys want to be her friends. She's like, I had loads of friends at secondary school, high school, if you call it America, maybe. Loads of guy friends, none of them want to fuck me. And I'd say things to them like, well, maybe they knew they couldn't. Or maybe they, you know, like, you know, maybe they didn't like you and it was just already off the cards or something. They just want to, like, shag you. And we get into this argument the other day and some guy texted her. And she shows me the text because she actually, she's very, we're very open with each other. I included one of the texts 
um, in the folder if you guys have it. Um, she's like, mm -hmm. oh, this guy, uh, you know, this guy texted me, by the way, and he's like, you know, sending me flirty messages, whatever. Oh, Wait, folder, I don't see this. Oh, what it's, I, I just in the, it's just in the Discord. It's I didn't really one. have screenshots because I chat a lot on phone <laughs> calls with her. I'm not really a texting guy. Mm -hmm. But uh -huh. it was sort of like the kind of thing, like she said, she tells me every time someone messages her because it's the sort of thing where she's like, Charlie, you know, these guys are messaging me. I know it's kind of weird. And if you ever see a text, if you're around me, you know, this is him. And oh, dude, him. hold on. You're just like, you're in these you're in troubled waters oh, oh yeah. my god Big time. there's so much that could be going on here so let me tell you i'm of two minds are you ready but steve before you do it you have to be aware that i'm sort of aware where you're going and i no, no you don't know where the fuck i'm going okay. hold on how old are you 23 24 you're a you child. know nothing yeah nothing. you're a come child on. okay come yeah. on he i can know. tell you let me tell you because okay it could be good or it could be bad okay? okay so you get a message also uh i can i read this is that okay mm -hmm. okay so you say she says also, the blank guy I mentioned added me on Instagram, and we had a little banter on it in case you see a message me in the future. And then you respond, heart, also I love you. So here's the thing, okay? I don't know your girl, all right? Yep. But here's the thing, okay? Messages like this are either really good yes. or really bad. They're the really good one, actually, though. Okay, it's <laughs> hard to I know. know. Because it could, be like one gonna... of those things, it could be one of those things where she's literally like, hey, listen, like, I know guys message me, and I know that makes you uncomfortable, but like, I'm being like yeah. super open here so you can see exactly what's going on because no, I'm not hiding anything, right? Could be that. You're right. The, but I know it's good because we've had the conversation and she's been like, okay, if guys message me, do you want me to tell you about them or would you rather I don't? And we sort of just, you know, you assume you trust me. And I've told her I trust you, but like, there's some weird guys I kind of like to know who's who. You know what I mean? Okay. No, see, could also so, be the case where she's like, I'll uh, let me. I'll show you everything because I'm super open. Blah 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 well, blah. Well, we also on the side. We have on, like, some Snapchat side. or some. Yeah, other you know what? Stuff. This is so fucked, mate. It's so fucked. You got to get a fucking hold of your woman here, okay? Why are you allowing this shit to continue? But, you know, I bet you this fucking bitch. I bet you if you're oh out there God, doing the yeah. same thing with other women, that you would be not getting the same leeway. That's a fact right there, okay? Yeah, but it's no, to it's no. totally different when there's like like it's if there's a whole bunch totally of it's different. It's, not, it's actually oh, not it true, Dan, because okay. she's been over the thing with me, and she's been I've been like, hey, if I get texted by somebody, because I'm I'm leaving my job soon to go study a master's, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be at uni a little bit away from. How attractive is life. your girlfriend? I can send you a picture if you want, but she's pretty attractive. What the fuck? No, no, I don't want to be to Yeah, no, if you're yeah, no, no, to do it, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Okay. let's do it, yeah. yeah. All right, as long as you don't share them, them, I'll DM them to you, Destiny. No, we're not going to share them, yeah. I won't. Uh, Destiny, if you search my name, I'll... I'm going to save it on my phone. I would send it to send it to Yad, and he can I post send it. Them. I send it to uh, Destiny, is that okay? You can't, we're not friends. Send it to Yad. Yeah, Yad. Maybe we should be friends. Oh my, this is like a... That's why, that's if you're worried, worried about your girlfriend stepping forward. out on you, <laughs> you don't want to be friends with me, kid, okay? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not worried, worried. honestly, Dan. You're like... Awesome. You are worried? That's why you're fucking here. Yeah, exactly. I'm why not you worried. This, you are like fucking are you paranoid. This is like you a, here? Your problem this is a three-topic situation. is concerned his girlfriend okay, is trying to smash other bros. Team, That's not what I wrote. Wait, wait, wait. That's oh, not okay. what I wrote. Okay. Well, that that was somebody else perceived. wrote that on my fucking behest, mate. I didn't uh, you know what? You should. You should. I would tap the fuck She's out of this. Stop! Dan, okay, first of all, hold on. First of all, gangster, do us a favor. TLDR us your three issues so we know what you're actually asking about otherwise you're going to keep getting getting this shit from us. Also, yeah, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is this was she dating you in this outfit and she was in a public place with us or give me no, some guy? No, this was before I met her. This was at a med ball, uh like a, a like a ball like a prom sort of thing for med students. Okay, and she was saying here that like, oh, I've never had guys like be interested in me before. No, 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 she has them all the time. You're no, done. No, no. The point you're is done. how No, no, no. She says no, she has them all the time. We know about them. Okay. It's like when I, it's just when she's I say. She's very aware that men are attracted to I'm her. I'm very and she's aware. I'm not that. insecure about it. I'm totally fine. The problem I is, would be I say. You should she, be. She, not him she. Okay, okay. I keep right, saying you're getting to her. Into the, yeah, go. There's all these guys nice to her. She's, well, she's pretty attractive. I don't know what you think. It's all subjective. But I'm saying there's loads of guys messaging you. They probably all fucking like you. It doesn't bother me. But as long, it only bothers me when you tell me they just want to be your friend. Does that make sense? Yes. That pisses me off. It's like, yeah. and she's like, are you insecure? I'm like, no, it's nothing to do with insecure. I honestly don't care because I'm dating you and you're hot. I already know they're going to try and fuck you. It's when mm -hmm. you tell me they just want to be friends and you're like, well, you know, like, oh, they just took me for coffee because they want to be my friend. 
And I'm, that was issue one. I was like, she, she's okay. telling me. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Does she seem you. like naive? Like, does she seem like she's, she's like, no, they just, or is she very she's aware that naive. she's attractive? She's very aware she's, no, she's quite insecure and she's unaware she's attractive because she didn't used to be per se. I guess she had like puberty. She looks really good now. She didn't used to be. I think she's got some like trauma issues there, personal issues. She doesn't know uh, particularly. She, maybe she does, but she had a lot of friends in high school or whatever, secondary school. And now, um, She's got a sort of attitude that's like, I had all these friends in school. They're not trying to fuck me, you know, sort of thing. I'm like, yes, they are. And she's like, Charlie, that's just you. You might, you know, like, you might have that perspective, but not everybody's like that. They just want to be friends, you know? And that was an argument we had where it basically ran into a wall because I was like, okay, well, they're just trying to shag you. Wait, it doesn't bother me, but just don't deny it. Do you it. trust her to have boundaries with these men? Yes, like, Would you I trust do, her that genuinely. if they tried to, like, if they made a move on her, that she would shut it down? Yes, 100%. Okay. But it still bothers okay. me when they when people are like bothering her. You know what I mean? It's not that I'm. Why? It's hard to you explain because it's not like I'm insecure. But uh, you're it's not like, insecure. Would... You fully trust her to shut her down, and yeah. you trust her to be able to like have the gaugement to basically know when they're like going to hit on her or whatever. Yeah, it just annoys you to hear that she's basically like kind of like playing dumb and being like, of course they just want she's to be my friends. She's not playing dumb. She actually just no no. Listen, should... I've got you. I'm in your brain. Okay. Mm -hmm. I so I'm literally in an open relationship and I get irritated when I hear shit like this so I believe you when you say it that like when you've got like an attractive significant other and they come up to you and they're like oh yeah so like this guy's been talking to me he's like really chill and blah 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 and I think he's like really friendly he's, like, he's not friendly he wants to fuck you how fucking yeah yeah that's you? exactly what I said yeah hearing that is really annoying like just be aware of yeah. what's going on don't be a fucking exactly. um but convincing women of that is really really hard yes for, and, do you and we ran to. into an argument because of it because i was like look just i don't care if they're flirting with you just don't tell me they're not and she doesn't even know that they are so mm -hmm. we can't even hit an agreement there there's just a brick wall there's we we have polar opposite views on what's occurring and she just doesn't believe it's happening she thinks everybody wants to be a friend and all these guys are lovely to her because they're genuinely nice guys there's, surprisingly but here, so this is the big issue that you're playing into and this is something for her to figure out and it's really 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 difficult okay so one of the hardest things in life to be is a pretty woman that wants to be taken seriously and try to accomplish things yeah. in any real field because you never have any idea how much you've accomplished versus how much like people are just giving you things because you're pretty well and the, girls sorry. can fall onto both ends of that, where some of them... Have you ever watched House? Uh, House MD, like uh, Hugh Laurie. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I've watched it. The one, the one woman doctor in the first team, this was kind of like her issue. And oh, the blonde girl. It pretty well, yeah. Where sometimes women like that will try really, really hard to prove themselves. They'll go out of their way to like wear turtlenecks all the time to never look attractive or do anything. Arguably, Lauren has talked about this stream where she has this issue. Then they, they will almost present themselves almost like somewhat masculine to try to avoid that. And then other women will kind of go through and be like, well, I don't think men do this at all. Because for them to accept that other thing means they would have to accept so many social interactions that they've kind of yes. attributed to their personality or, you know, their accomplishments or whatever are really just guys trying to fuck them. That's a really, really well, hard thing. This happened the other day because one of the guys of like the six or seven fucking dudes DMing her what suddenly hit her something flirty and she hit them back with, I'm, you know, I'm with Charlie or whatever, me. Mm -hmm. And they suddenly stopped talking to her and she was, she had like a fucking problem with me. She mm -hmm. was like, I don't understand why I can't get taken seriously. And I was like, well, all these guys are trying to do this to you. I was telling you. She was like, no, the other guys are just trying to be my friend. This guy was just not one out. So I don't mm -hmm. know how to navigate. Do I even I bother trying to can. convince her? I, I think like this is her journey, right? Because like Steven's right. Like at some point she be like this. This is a question like most people like I've had to ask myself in this field. To what extent am I actually it, competent or successful? Fuck off. And to what extent is it just like people like trying to like give me a pass or whatever for like being young and attractive? Like that's a really like kind of mind fucky thing. And so like I get that it's annoying to you that essentially she's like kind of in denial land in your worldview. The issue is that for her to come out of that basically means that she has to go back and be like, wait, what was, ac what do I actually contribute here? Is it just my looks? That's scary because I'm always getting older, which means if most of what I'm contributing yeah. is just being attractive, that means I am going to be less and less valuable with every single like gear that passes. Right. So like, 
I don't know if this is something worth fighting over super hard, especially like, especially if you fully trust her and I you do. trust her to navigate that stuff. So she's not going to like breach the relationship. You're yeah. basically having to convince her. Like if she's already insecure, if she said that she was an unattractive, like she at least viewed herself as unattractive her entire life, she's probably built her identity. She's in med school for being a smart person. Like her identity is probably built to some extent on like her academics and her like success within academics and career, which is cool. So for you to basically be like, it's not all that. It's actually just like, you know, yeah, that's the problem. your looks like, and your tits. I'm not She's trying to shoot hot. her down, but I'm sort and of shooting her down both. by telling her. Yes. Her and so, sort of shooting her down. This is probably not the hill I would die on necessarily. I would like probably like the better conversation is probably like self value. Like where, where are you finding your self value from? And like, you know, it can be a complex think number of things but she's not going to let go of this unless she can find like self-value and like so other things your advice is i just leave it i really trust her, so it doesn't really matter but if people are like dma a girl and you're in a monogamous relationship it's kind of fucking annoying even if you don't care it's like who do you think you are yeah they know yeah, she's yeah. with me as well what so is saying like, is true you like you can negotiate that as part of your relationship i don't appreciate yeah. it when people are messaging you like this i feel like it's disrespectful to me you're completely within your right to say that but i can't mm -hmm. because she thinks it's people trying to be friends so i can't deny her having friends oh that's true you're fucked Never yeah mind. so i can't so i'm stuck here where i'm trying to voice to her my problems and to me it's me stepping in the way for getting in fr with friends wait how, how do you friends. wait how would you do that how would you set that boundary all right. i would just say something like well no 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 wait, cool. I, all right then. how would you set that boundary how would, oh, you're asking me, so sorry. You tell, you tell your woman, your woman, you say, hey, I don't really like it when guys are like hardcore flirting with you. But she's like, oh no, they're not flirting. They're all friendly. Yeah. Like I respect your boundary. If a guy was flirting with me, um, I, I would shut it down, but I don't think they're flirting with me. How do you do that? Ooh, that's really, uh, essentially like you could basically be like, I don't really trust that it isn't. Um, and it makes me uncomfortable. Like essentially like voice it as like your feeling stuff. Like it makes me pretty uncomfortable. I'd appreciate if like Which there's some way to navigate. security, by the way. Even yeah, though it's does. not driving from insecurity, it reeks of it. Uh, even if the, the actual reasoning behind it is because it's just people like fucking with your shit when you're in a relationship, it absolutely reeks of you stepping into their life and denying them friends. So that can harm your relationship just even saying that. So Man, that's the, this that's is the so, so, see, this is really tricky because, like, the way, like, for example, like the way Nick and I would navigate this is like Nick doesn't really care, um, and so even if I was like, ah, I think he's just friends with me, he trusts me enough that if the guy changes from friends to flirty, he knows that I'm gonna like shut it down. That like he's not super like worried about well, it. I trust that, but I yeah, hang but the out with her a lot. He doesn't think she can identify it, right? Yes, that, and I hang out with her a lot, and she'll get pinged on her phone, and she'll check it, and it'll be like message from this guy. I'll be like. Well, I, won't, I probably won't say anything, so I don't really. But I might be like, you know, who's this? And she'll be like, oh, the guy from the hospital who's just my mate. And he'll be like texting us something like, oh, hey, you know, what do you like doing? What are your hobbies? You know, I'm just like, dude, he clearly is trying to fucking drag you. And then she'll have a problem with it. Because yeah. I'm undermining her through that. I'm undermining her ability to have friends. But they're not, they're not looking to have friends. Nobody will. I told her, like, nobody's trying to be a friend. Like, guys are going to have friends with guys. Okay, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. That's wait. A way too extreme. That's not okay, I, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't say that, Steve, but I was trying to say most of these people probably are just trying to, either they know you're with me and they're waiting for an opening, or they're <laughs> playing the back. Yeah, okay, well, now you got to be careful because you're literally playing into her biggest fear when yeah. you say stuff like that. Like some of these guys probably are texting and flirting and they definitely would be down to fuck if she would, but they might just remain platonic almost the whole no. time. What they do is they flirt and then they do every one of deniability, them? every single one. So they'll do like, oh, at the end, she'll say there was one guy where she said, like, are you flirting with me? And she was like, he was like, no, I'm just a naturally flirty guy when he clearly fucking wasn't, by the way. It was just like plausible deniability. He's like flirting with you. And then he'll say, oh, I'm a naturally flirty guy. So she can go, oh, okay. Well, he's just, I guess, a naturally flirty guy. You know what I, I mean? Honestly, I think this is something that like, if, if you don't set a boundary, then you need to work with it through her. And like, there's an element of like, if she's so resistant to the worldview that you're suggesting, either you're going to ruin your relationship by trying to like shove it down her throat or essentially like be beside her. And so that when these situations turn into it, you could be like, look this is what it is when it's glaringly that. And she can be like, Oh fuck. Oh. Like those are kind of your options basically. Or you set a hard boundary, like a super conservative boundary. And you say, I don't want guys in your DMS aggressively. Like those are kind of your options right now is forcing a worldview down her throat that she won't accept no. and might ruin your relationship. So what I, what I've done or is... Let her make the mistakes, especially because the mistakes aren't cheating on you. The mistakes are misreading guys and being wrong about it. And then when she's wrong, you can point out that she was incorrect. Yeah. Right? So what I did was I've just, 
just this was like a few weeks ago. I just want to chat about it here. But what I've done is I've just completely left it. Basically, I'm, I don't want to hear about guys. I trust you. Whatever, do your thing. But I wanted to make sure, like, check a double second opinion on this. You know what I mean? Here's right. what. Okay, <laughs> listen. Okay, you I'm come not here. worried. So you like, come here for know. Mr. Machiavellian. I know what you're looking for. Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll give you some help. Okay. All right, give it to me. Does she have a friend that's uglier than her? Oh, probably all of them. Okay. <laughs> All of her friends, all of her friends fucking hate that bitch, okay? They do, because she probably gets hit on more than them, and when they're hanging out, she, even though she's already in a relationship, other guys are going, what you need to do is you need to say, listen, obviously we disagree on this. We should just have a conversation between your friends about it. And God damn, dude, you go into her friends and a- asking to have a conversation, like, do you think these guys are flirting? Those girls would love to fucking dish out. Yeah, of course they're fucking flirting. Whatever ex is Charles' girlfriend or whatever the fuck your name yeah, is. Yeah. Those people will validate the fuck out of your opinion. And yeah, she'll be hearing it from girlfriends instead of you, and that would probably give you more in into her understanding. Contextually, that's a bit different, Destiny, because she's just moved about three weeks ago to a completely different city to work in a new like hospital with new people, doesn't really know anybody. So it's uh, helpful. Well, then you're fucked. Yeah, that would have been the way to go, though. It's getting is passing yeah. information through friends to get them to kind of validate what you're saying. But yeah, that would be the uh, that would be the plan to take the throne. But how I would I just I would that? just let the mistakes happen and then point it out when they're there, basically, that, um, that, rather than doing like the manipulative like plotting with the. No, friend. I'm not. I'm not really yeah. worried about doing it, making any moves or anything. I've sort of just left it. It's fine. Like guys can help her. I trusted or whatever. But I just thought, am I in the wrong here? Like, am I wrong in thinking they're probably trying to shag her? No, nah, pretty girls are dumb Probab- when it comes yeah. to understanding. Probably it. not. But there's like a lot of like pressure and everything built in for them to be taken seriously. Like your yeah. wife is like, do you say wife or girlfriend? Girlfriend. Yeah, she's like 23, 24, and she's a doctor and she's really pretty. Like there's going to be a lot of mind fucky shit she's going to deal with. Yeah, a lot um, of older experienced doctors playing like a paternal role in a hospital trying to like fucking take her on like some sort of... Yeah, and even, even absent right. that, just her own personal struggles of being like a pretty woman who has accomplishments who's trying to be taken seriously. Like all and, of that. And she, really she wants these benign, like part of it, she wants these benign relationships. Like she wants friendships with these people. Yeah. They're her colleagues. She's probably like... She actually prob- does. There's probably a lot of men around her as well in her workspace. So like the reality is like that it's possible that she could get a benign relationship out of this she's just gonna need to like fuck up enough and like kind of read it on her own before she like figures it out and that would be the only solution basically okay yep. well that was that was number one of three but i don't want to take too much of the time so it's up to you whether you want to let me go through number two they're quite short to the other ones what you. is just ask us a question for two real quick uh okay so number two was on the importance of sex so basically um she struggles with depression and stress for a long time um, had a lot of trauma and like hospitalization sort of thing like a lot of, I don't want to go into it but like a lot of problems in the past and there are periods of time where she doesn't want to have sex basically um, maybe like a week or two recently there was like a week or two where she didn't want to and I brought it up to her like sort of Damn. you know just a week or two and you're and it's like a significant problem or no it was like it was like two weeks but she basically phrased it like I don't know how long it's going to last you know what I mean like it uh-huh. might be for many months you know what I mean I wouldn't make okay. a problem out of it if it wasn't reasonable and I basically said to her in a reasonable way, it was like, um, um, sorry, I got to close the chat because we're really like, she's cheating, which is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Your chat destiny is ridiculous, by the way. I don't know like, why you're reading chat during this. Podcast. I don't know. It was at the top of my screen. But and I was basically to her, uh, saying to her, like, you know, I love you and all, but she was basically brought up the importance of sex. She was like, if we didn't have sex for ages, I wouldn't mind. And I was basically like to her. Um, sex is quite an important part of a relationship for me. If we didn't have it for a really long period of time, it would be a problem for me. Mm-hmm. Um, That's right. And yeah, and she's basically said, she basically was like, okay, starting to get worried about that. Um, How long have you been dating again? Uh, like not too long, like six to 12 months, but it's been really intense. Like oh, nine months. It's a fair, months. yeah, that's a, it's a fair boundary to have. You could have a serious discussion about it, but like that's all you can do like you guys might just be mismatched in terms of libido that could happen or she has other yeah. issues like yeah so she said like it wasn't as important due to some previous trauma and there might be periods of time where she can't get her head into regular sex and now uh, she made it and then suddenly she'd made it out like i was pressuring her because i was saying you know if we didn't have sex for ages it's an important part of relationship for me you know um and she was like okay well you're making it sound like we need to have sex now and i don't i'm not really in that mood do you know what i mean I was like, well, how can I voice my concerns to you that if we weren't having sex, we'd be missing a vital part of relationship? Um, yeah, you guys are just mis- also- you're just mismatching that she doesn't care that much about sex, whereas, whereas you do. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. But then also me saying that it's like a pressure on her to have sex, and that's not a nice thing for her. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, it's not pressure. It's just you giving a thing. Like, that's fine. Like, but that's a communication issue. I mean, yeah, it's not pressuring okay. to tell somebody that there's like a thing you need for a relationship. That's fine. Okay. And then the third thing was me and her. Okay, well. 
I'm leading these off and everyone's going to think that we're doomed, but we're actually not. We're actually very happy, man. Okay, go, so, last one, quick, go. Uh, we're very politically different. So she's like, I guess what an American would call like a liberal. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sort of like Ben Shapiro on Xanax. And she's like, Jesus AFC. Christ. Well, you're in the right stream for that. So, okay, I'm like, so I'm she's like a, a big Tory I'm fan like, and you were sucking no, off. No, 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 uh, I'm, 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 I'm a conservative. I'm like a British okay. conservative, like pretty liberal, but you know, like middle right. And she's oh no! Quite, wait, labor. It's labor versus Tory. Labor is left. And labor is Tory. Yeah. Right. yeah she's okay. like quite. She's quite left wing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. often we'll make jokes or whatever. Whatever. I'll make my fucking online guy jokes. You know, and she'll have a problem with it. And I was wondering, um, how viable do you guys think the politically opposed people are in relationships? Because it's and not a problem. Because I have to contextualize. Do you guys care this. about politics? Do uh, you actually no, care about No, but it like always care. comes up. Like actually you know, care. We're fucking force fed this shit these days in the news or whatever, whatever it is, rallies or whatever. I, I don't think most relationships need to end over politics. I think a lot of people who end relationships over politics are actually really stupid for the most part. It's manageable. You guys can like agree to disagree on certain politics. Most people just like politics isn't actually that intrinsically part of your life unless it actually is that intrinsically part of your life. And then, yeah, then you might not be compatible. But it seems like you guys have made it work so far. So I don't know why it would not work that's in the, the future. That's the difficult bit about this is that we're great. Like we hung out today, had lunch and stuff. Like The but, only but issue is one of you stuff. becomes radical. Radicals seem to be a lot harder to like navigate because the inherently if you become radical in any position, you're probably way more bought into politics in general. So uh, I'm not about to like sub to Nick Fuentes but like you know what i mean um and the, the other the, way, I, had right? an, I had an overall question for everybody which was like jesus sorry Dan, go, i'm sorry go ahead no the, go ahead you know the you know the adage of like people in relationships when they're similar to each other they say that's great you know we're very similar but then when they're different they'll be like oh it's great because we're quite different which one's true can it be true is it okay to be with somebody different to you it's better to be the same it's better really? to be the same you think statistically so? yeah, yeah statistically no it seems to be the same yeah more so well obviously if you're like radically different to each other no, it's you just add, you don't get to argue. More similar. This is why most people, if you look at people who marry each other, a lot of people have the same fucking first letter of their name. That's how much like birds of a feather flock together. Like that people just like people that are like them for the most part. Okay. You can be different on some areas. Different. Is that okay then? The more different you are, you're, you're the more different me. you are, the more contention you'll have, right? If you're radically, Dan, if one you're absolutely is super type A, I know. <laughs> if one is super type A and the other one is not, you're going to have fights over that sometimes. If one is like really radically like extroverted and the other one is incredibly introverted, there's going to be fights about that. The more general, the similar you are, the better it seems to work out. Okay, That's just okay. like statistically, yeah. All right. Well, that's basically all for me. I love you guys. You look beautiful, all three of you. And uh, thanks. Good luck, man. I am. Wonderful. I'm. I'm rooting for you, you know? <laughs> Dan, you're definitely not rooting for me. You're 100% wrong. You're reveling in the flames that are coming for me. No, I'm not, just so you know. I know Steven left here, but uh, listen, uh, off-camera advice for you right now, if I were you, I would actually put... Um, I'd try to... I didn't say this before, but I'd try to put some more uh, rules in place so she doesn't do it. I, you remember... Wait, uh, hello? If you watched the last one, hi. Hey. If oh, you sorry, watched the last one... Uh, yep. that we did of this i said like you know i'm pretty clear like on on friends and things like that my wife like you're pretty open but maybe if you're concerned you know maybe um you know maybe be a little bit more you know i think this is a bad idea like i understand you're not gonna do anything but temptation leads to bad shit so yeah just think, i know just think that's about very that. that's not very really odd for a woman to deal with if you're if you're pressing yourself in that problem anyway should i jump out because somebody yeah all right well good yep. luck Cheers, i am rooting for you thanks sir thanks dan thanks bye bye yep. bye bye gangster. Cheers. bye bye under the porch, hold up, please stand by for your dossier, which is being provided to us by Yad, very slowly. Say nothing until Yad is ready. <laughs> Remain completely silent. You're not allowed to speak until I know what I'm working with here. Okay. Yad! Er, okay, there we go. Under the porch, 23, male, he, him, bisexual, employed, living with roommates, Problem. Wait, my girlfriend keeps getting hit on and won't do anything about it. Is, am I having fucking deja vu? Wait. There's yeah, screenshots are in no particular order. The DMs are of you and your girlfriend arguing about this. That's all. You, I hope you listened to the last conversation we just had because this is the same exact thing. Same age, same everything. So you're going to get the same advice twice, but let's go. Let's start with DM1. Um, It's a little similar. I could kind of... It's not quite exactly the same, though. Okay. Can you turn your mic up a little bit? You're quite soft. 
<laughs> she doesn't need to know. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. You are soft, but that's all right. Yeah. We're going to make you hard on this call. I mean, not, what? you know, fuck, Dad? you know, a hard. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> You gotta invest in more chokers if you're gonna say shit like that, Dan. Uh, I'm talking about right now, Dan. You know what? Maybe we won't make you hard, okay? What of it? I'm sorry. That's fine. He's bisexual. It's okay. All right. All right. I'm going through this uh, these docs. Number one. Remember, it's reverse chronological order, Stephen. You can uh, click the button. Uh, he said they're not in any order. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, they should be. A little bit better, kind of what the situation is. Cause All right, go. So Explain. Our, yeah. So our a lot of our relationship and our talks and all that kind of stuff is on Snapchat. So I it's I tried to find some docs to kind of explain it, but there, a lot of them are just like screenshots of us arguing about random stuff. Um, but I could kind of give a better idea just explaining it here. So basically, she um, it's very similar. She's it's. For sure they're hitting on her. She knows they're hitting on her. And what's kind of happening is because of where we work, um, there's a lot of people. We're, we're the low, both of us. We're like, well, she's a coworker, or she was. She went to another place now. But we were the low rung on the totem pole. And, like, people that were above us would, like, hit on her. And she wouldn't block them or talk to them because she felt that, it would ruin her chances. Is this always how your fights go? Sorry, looking through your messages. Ma Gaslighter, manipulator, victim. I don't. Anywhere. I don't know. Android is the green. You green yeah. is you, right? Okay. Yeah. So is this I'm, how your fights consistently go? And then when you say I'm going to take a break, I can't emotionally do this. She continues. Is that like pretty yeah, standard? So there's a yeah. Um, she doesn't want to let things go when we fight, and there's like some history with my roommates. Um, not with me specifically, but she feels that I was living with them when we started dating, but once, and she knew about them, basically both of them were girls. Um, one of them's trans, but they weren't out when I moved in. So then basically I moved in and then found out I'm living with two girls. So, um, there's some history with that where she's got some bad blood with them. And whenever... Relating to some of that, um, she felt I was being manipulative or abusive. Um, I obviously disagreed, but it just it, that kept coming up. And now that this stuff started happening, um, things just spiraled a lot. Do you think she's going to cheat on you? I I don't think so, because we had a somebody who was actually like a friend of mine went behind my back and hit on her and she didn't do it. Um, she told me immediately. So I, I, I don't think she is um, where I'm kind of at right now is I we're kind of in a spot where I'm kind of deciding if I really want to continue the relationship because of the, how these arguments go and how severe they get. Um, and then how it, it feels like she's getting hit on and then she just kind of lets them do it is kind of the way I feel about it. Um, you mentioned yelling and stuff. Do you often like yell at each other, like screaming? You apologized at one point for yelling at her and, and stuff like that. Yeah. So again, a lot of this is on either in person or on Snapchat. And I just kind of tried to put some stuff together, but, um, uh, typically what kind of happened will be, sh she'll be, um, she'll get, she says, I got triggered about something and she'll get upset with me. And I will, and she will kind of start yelling. And I know that there's some mental health reasons there for why that happens. So I will try to be calm about it and try to talk with her rationally. But eventually it'll go on for so long that I will then get upset and I might start yelling. Uh, but I'll try to, typically I do kind of try to de-escalate it and then I'll apologize later. But then that actually sometimes reignites the argument. She'll won't accept the apology. Yeah, yeah. I mean, your guys' entire like communication dynamic is super, super like it needs to stop and change like immediately if you guys actually want to work out. This like this communication style on both of your guys' end is not working very well. 
Uh, if you take a timeout and she doesn't respect that timeout, that's a really big issue. If you're timing out, you're timing out. The thing is the way to make timeouts work the best is you set a time of when you're going to reconvene. Like we're going to check back in two hours. We're going to check back in 24 hours, right? So timeouts need to be very clear. They need to be something negotiated when you're both calm and you agree to timeouts and then they need to be followed because like timeouts are super important. Um, you guys are like throwing like kind of psyche language, uh, particularly on her end at you. Um, are you real quick? How long have you guys been dating? Uh, we were kind of getting to about the year and a half point here. (sighs) You're not worried about her cheating. You're concerned about her not shutting down people hitting on her. Or does she disagree that they're hitting on her or is she fine that they're hitting on her because she knows she's not going to go any, it's not going to go anywhere. Like what's the. Yeah. So it, she, my concern is it's just, so some, a lot of these people are people I know. I, I know who these people are and she doesn't want me to say anything to them. And she doesn't want me to, she basically wants me to pretend it's not happening and that she won't take steps to like block them um, or anything like that. And her reasoning is she's worried that it'll, or at least it was that it's going to prevent her from getting a job or being promoted kind of thing. And that's why sometimes that's, that's kind of true in our situation. No, that shit, that that's, I don't, I'm not buying that. That's a wild. why would her, why would not, why would shutting down her friend flirting with her prevent? Well, no, these are like coworkers. So, like, so for example, like, there, I, I don't want to say exactly where I work, but basically think of it like we're in the mail room and they're like the people in the actual office upstairs and we're trying to get into the office upstairs, both of us. And people from the office are coming down, or because while we're working with them, they're getting her Snapchat and like hitting on her. And she'll tell me, she's showing me. I'll see it, and she, but she won't stop talking with them, and she won't, um, she won't stop the them doing it. And so I've asked her to do it, and she'll be like, "No, if I block him, he's gonna like go tell everyone around that I'm." Well, she doesn't have to. She doesn't need to block. She doesn't him. Need to block him. Just like ways to have a boundary that isn't ex- as extreme as blocking. Like you could just like softly ghost them, or like give like very non-committal responses. Mm-hmm. That's a very, very, very soft boundary of being like, okay. Mm-hmm. Or because it almost sounds like she's flirting back with them. Is that what is that what's happening? Yeah, I, I f- I'll tell her I, I everything you're saying. I agree. And like, this is kind of what I would say to her that like, hey, it's I, even if you're not actually flirting with them, I feel like they're going to interpret it that like that's kind of the way I, everything you're saying. I agree. It doesn't make a lot of sense from her end. I, that's, she, at least that's she's at least passively like can, like agreeing to the the nature of the conversation by like engaging back in like a positive way right like yeah, this is what i'm like, saying like the softest boundary would be to like soft ghost by like giving like one word responses until they stop um a more direct would be like hey i'm uncomfortable or hey just so you know i'm dating right blocking would be the most extreme thing which like yeah you probably shouldn't do that if that's your manager like that's not a very good idea but there's a lot of steps in between that where you can set a boundary that it's, it's she's just not willing to do Mm-hmm. It basically is the way it feels to me because everything yeah. you're saying, I, I agree. It's like there's a reasonable solution to this, and when people won't find the reasonable solution, it means that they don't actually want to solve the problem. That's usually my guess. Yeah, because they like enjoy the attention, or they're making excuses for why they want to be able to do that thing. Yeah. yeah, especially if she's doing this with multiple people, like not just her manager. If this is happening in multiple areas of her life, there's reasonable solutions. Yeah, like I, I agree. It just feels like she's worried. A lot of these people are like coworkers that are above us and like status or whatever at the okay wait 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 stop hold on you're coping you have to stop using that reason that's the reason she's giving you you can very easily shut down that type of thing without being like never talk to me again fuck you right yeah so right normal boundaries are fine mm-hmm. yeah and i agree that's i'm saying that because that's what she's telling me and she's like well sure but don't stop repeating it it's not true yeah you know what's right. actually going on here all right so yeah and she this knows is... that they're flirting with her. So it's not like she's like, oh, I don't know. Like the first call, it's like, she knows that this is happening. Mm-hmm. She knows that there's mm-hmm. reasonable solutions. She's not taking them. Mm-hmm. Why? Right. And that's part of the thing. I'm just kind of at, at a point where I'm like, for me, I'm like kind of feeling like I, I don't really want to keep putting up with this. And 
it just feels like it's not. Yeah. If it's a, if it's a non-negotiable, it's a non-negotiable. That's just yeah. like how it works. Just like make sure that if, if it is a non-negotiable, that it is a non-negotiable. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful. Okay. Yep. Good luck. Be careful. And good luck. See you guys. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Is that the last one? That was the last so. one. Wow. Another successful dating advice stream. Yeah. Sorry that, um, sorry we cut into your Sam boxing match there at the end. Dan, I hope we didn't, uh, distract you too much from it. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, you know, Sam Hyde, you know, <laughs> he, that means he gets to come for Hassan Piker. So that's going to be the interesting thing now. That's the next logical step. You have one last potential. Mom, um, no, no, we're good. Darius. No, we're all set. Okay, Thank Darius. you, though. No, Darius. we're yeah. no. I'm all tuckered out. We're good on that one. Thanks, Dad. Um, okay, we'll do a postmortem. We'll communicate in chat, and it'll be all good to go. Wait, yeah. what's the boxing match? I oh. uh, I don't know. Apparently, Sam is boxing somebody, and Dan has been watching that for the past 15 minutes. So that's what no, he's it's oh. it's over. Ricked up on right now. Oh. <laughs> Ricked up? What, what is that exactly? That's some Zoomer <laughs> slang. Ricked up. <laughs> How do, do I want to know what that means? I don't. I think I, I know what it means. But um, hey, hey, listen. I think it went. We should do the post. post. <laughs> we'll be talking the we'll talking the DMs, okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. Have you had hey. too many martinis today? No, no he I hasn't. Had had he hasn't anything to drink. That's the problem. I'm getting I know. a little, a little yeah. tweaking out here. It's fine. <laughs> uh, should we should we continue the uh, Darius stuff? Is that a well, actually, uh, well, there's like 20 things I need to catch on. Now I kind of want to see what happened with the Sam fight. I'm curious about he that. He won. No, they were both fucking gassed. Went three and rounds. And was he fighting? They're, they went three had... rounds? Was it TKO? Yeah. KO? What happened? No. Th- or was uh, it only a three round match or whatever? It was this three whole rounds, streamer yeah. boxing thing is the strangest thing. I and think then Worski got like knocked watching... out in like the first five seconds. Like, why yeah. don't we watch normal boxers? Like, it's just like watching subpar boxing. It's celebrities, because nobody cares about the actual sport of boxing. The boxing is a fucking joke. But now we just like make it a joke and we treat it like a circus. And we want to watch the animals fight. That's what it is. Problem? Mm. Um, well, I, I don't know. I just uh, I feel like normal boxing is better. But... So well, yeah, Sam, Sam Hyde knocked out the other guy. And Worski got knocked out in like 10 seconds. Damn. <laughs> Um, yeah. Wait, are they even similar size? Like, Sam Hyde's a big guy. Yeah, the other guy was a big guy, too. Okay, okay. Sam Hyde looked like a real big guy. Before yeah, did, he's, um... like, tall and thick. <laughs> what? Um, did what? Uh, how did Worski get knocked out? Punched in the face. Like, was it, like, a temple clock? You said it was, like, like three... Team? You said it was yeah, in, like... Yeah, three rounds. No, no, he no, said no, it was no. in one round. No, yeah, I think it was only like the first ten seconds or something like that. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> That's oh crazy. Oh, my God. Boom, boom. That's kind of embarrassing. Oh my god, he got late the fuck out. Oh no. Okay. How long do they like prep before they're boxing? Like, how long do they train for? It's been a few months, right? How do you think you would do in one of these fights, Steve? Depends on who I'm up against and how Sam Hyde. hard. Yeah, I would get destroyed. He's like no. a foot taller than me. Listen, for Sam Hyde, you just gotta you gotta run around the cage for a long time. <laughs> yeah, tire him <laughs> out, tucker him out. You gotta yeah. tucker him out. There is no other option. Be fast with the dodges with your head. Yeah, that is the yeah. only the only thing you can do. Wow. Um, Thanks for the advice, guys. Uh, what about in, infra in, infra hods? He's like similar um, similar body height size. Uh, I, have, I have no idea. I'm not sure. I don't know what his his like fitness level is. I don't know. Five six months. Who knows? It'd be do you fun. have long wingspan or do you have a short wingspan? Like, are your arms average? Are they Probably longer? Average? I don't know. I've never measured them before. You know, it should oh, be. You got to figure that same... out. I believe it's the same height that you are. It's generally that's usually, it, but, but some like, people can be longer, shorter. Yeah, like some of the best MMA fighters in the world have like crazy long arms for their body, which is why they can like, like what's his name, like Jesse Jones or something like that. Wait, you guys can, can talk. I'll be back. I need to get food. I'm fucking hungry. Be back. Okay. Okay. So, where they teach you that in psychology okay. school or it's what? Bonding time. No, no. Um, Nick, my husband's really into MMA fighting. Oh, and he like how how cute he likes to tell you about all of the stuff like. So, listen, Kyla, yeah, the reason this one's really good is actually you can see his wingspan's a lot longer than the other guys. That's like a genetic advantage that they have. And, uh, yeah, you know, that's just a little factoid I learned. I could have been an <laughs> MMA fighter. I just chose not to. I settled down. That's, that's, this, I, that's like the most interesting shit to me is like the genetic anomalies that just like dominated a sport. Uh, like, like Michael Phelps is such an interesting human being to like look at because he's just like a genetic freak, mm-hmm. um, you know? And then, and then I got into MMA fighting. I started watching a bunch of documentaries for a while. So what do you, so let me ask you this on the relationship. What, what's okay. your, what's your whole, what's your thinking of thoughts when it comes to the Melina, Darius, 
Sushia, etc. That whole shenanigan of uh, I would need a stuff. TLDR of like I came in like midway, so mm-hmm. I don't fully understand what was what, what did you what, did, what 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 was facts? Darius's problem? So what what facts do you have? What do you know right now? I so I came in and I all I heard was basically Darius talking about how he felt like she was like basically leading him on and like wanting to date, and she was like this wasn't really that sexual. I wasn't super comfortable with it, mm-hmm. um, and he was paused with sushi at the time that's like all i feel like i could gather um i don't know what his claim against melina was though was it just you were hitting on me more than you're saying i don't you know it was kind of hard to follow the one thing i do know that there was a dog that is now like you know how they have like the million dollar man now we have like the ten thousand dollar dog that's okay Are, oh, you guys busy? Are you guys busy? I'm sorry if I'm interrupting. Am I interrupting? No, if you're We're here for some you. advice. It's yeah. so Dude, perfect. No, I'm not any fucking advice. Can you tell Melina, tell her right now, you live close, tell her to stop her stream. She is fucking like going full autism. Please, bro, please. What is Just, she doing? She's like trying to talk about things, but she's like mixing things up. Even NNN is in there calling her fucking retarded, dude. It's fucking autistic. Just tell her to stop. It's just, it's making, it's getting worse. The best way is for you. Oh, am I on a voice changer? What is the issue? Yeah. What is the issue We're, between everyone, the two? I'm on a voice changer. Okay, so I had this like really cool idea that like I would come back to Twitch under a new handle and I'd be using a voice changer and I forgot to change Darius, it. no one asked, okay? What that I did strange. ask is right now, how are you going to handle this situation that Melina is out there poisoning the earth? with her lies when you have been a truth sayer from the beginning. And there's a lot of people that are going to believe her because she has more viewers. She has more status. She's better looking. Um, what are you going to do to step up? What's shut even up. the issue? Are you just saying that she flirted and like was more into her than she's saying she is? What was the issue there? Like what was yeah, the issue? Like, what are all... you angry about? Like what were you originally angry oh, with Melina about? Oh, advice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're I on the my... relationship advice show, so go ahead. Take, what can yeah. we do for you? Can I get my camera on? Yeah, go ahead. No, go no, it. no. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I'm too scared, honestly. I, yeah, okay, understood, understood. I don't, I don't know if Stephen would like that or not. I don't know. <laughs> um, no, the issue there was, there was just an issue where she like was recently. So we were really close friends previously. Um, at least I thought, and um, something happened uh, in Austin, Texas, like two weeks ago. Um, and I guess that made it so now she has no respect for me. Um, when the thing that happened seemed like it was just kind of like a misunderstanding or something lost in translation. And uh, I got pretty upset because my dog was dying and I was like, I had a lot of shit that happened this month in general. She and she was like kind of like my best friend and she didn't reach out to me, didn't do anything. The most she's messaged me was asking like how many grams, like after I left, I literally cried uh, Austin, Texas because I felt like um, I kind of lost a friend because she like was really weirded out by me. And I was like, okay, I didn't mean to like get that get that impression on you but like, was M- like melina is your best friend at least i thought we were we talked a lot about shit um pretty personal stuff then we talked like I, I i can again i don't know if you don't know the context of the relationship but we talked for like a while and we've been pretty close um and yeah i just thought Fair. that yeah so like after leaving uh, i was pretty sad because i was like okay i Did feel like i kind of like feel like you were her best friend maybe not her best friend but she definitely thought we were friends uh, at least like friends when we Right, but the right, issue is, had... like, if you guys okay. have an imbalance okay. in the perspective of relationship, like, I talk to Melina all the time about very deep stuff, too, but I wouldn't be like, Melina's my best yeah. friend, right? Yeah, so yeah, but I would say, I don't really dynamic talk... there? Yeah, I would say I don't personally talk to, like, people pers- about, like, my deep interest, like, stuff, and I do talk <laughs> about it. And she, what are we talking uh, about? Oh, Melina and uh, Darius Chama. We're TLDRing Chama. what Melina's actually is going a, on. Melina's on another stream right now dropping some fucking truth bombs on Darius. Why? Well, I don't know why she's on her stream talking about it. She's in a fucking podcast. It's like that fucking Fortnite thing where the three kids are all talking about it, but they're all talking about my fucking life. They're all like, oh, is Darius actually like fucked in real life? I'm like, dude, like, what do what? Like, I talk to you about all my shit, dude. It's like so fucking cringe that you're even like doing this fucking cringe ass bit. But uh, answer your question, uh, Kyla. Um, I would say for me, I thought we were really close friends. She called me and talked to me about stuff that was happening with like, in her relationship that was pretty intense and when she was feeling incredibly down she would call me so i would say maybe it was reciprocated maybe it wasn't reciprocated on the level that i had but i would say it was i was like we were gonna do stuff together like we were gonna hang out we were gonna like you know go to fucking um go on trips and shit you know so i I would not say best friend i don't know what her criteria is for best friend but i thought we were pretty close wait is the question Um, whether or not it was reciprocated melina and darius were very close friends that was a mutual thing 100 percent. yeah i was trying to figure out like the level of closeness because i just wasn't sure they were very close friends absolutely very very close after that stuff happened and i she hasn't messaged me at all kind of since i've like almost like attempted to kill myself after i went back home not because of her but because of i lost my job like the day after i came back home very unfortunate um and like the only thing she's messaged me was like two two comments like um were like asking how many like 
what percent of shrooms was in this thing I brought and like how much was in the MDMA. And that's like the only thing she messaged me. And then like, I'm like, okay, dude, that's pretty fucking much. This like really fucking sucks. Um, and then yesterday when I finally get 10K, you know, for some fucking crazy reason, uh, which I don't even understand, uh, I was really happy and I was like, okay, cool. Like my dog doesn't have to die because I lost my job and everything like that. And she's just like, like when is it the she didn't message me do anything about it she just kind of just went into the chat and was like joining on the bandwagon and people saying lol darius got money he's gonna fucking like he's not gonna uh execute his dog like he should have done that instead like after, like after fucking what's it called after this i'll look into like maybe if i should get a new home for her i'll look into like you know maybe if i'll have to like you know figure something out i don't know i got money that wasn't mine in the first place so i'm using it to get her fixed and then maybe after that i'll have to make the you know adult decision to the dog why are we had parvo back when we got her like three months ago and then like apparently something got in her stomach and gave her intestinal into something 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 but it's like a, apparently a very like intense surgery that costs a lot of money which i did not uh realize until after um i got the donations the first time i got like so i did like a thousand dollar donation goal just to like get her x-rays and everything like that to see what's up and that was it and then after i got the surgery cost i was like well if anyone wants to actually do this I will go ahead and, you know, I'll take it. But if not, then I'll make the decision of, you know. Uh, so basically you, like Melina's not being the friend that you were like wanting and hoping her to be. Yeah. And, um, and like, you're hurt by that because you feel like you were closer and would have received more like warmth and compassion than you are. Is that? Well, find a local venue. You're feeling? Hard, what do you think I did? You monkey shit. Uh, yes, I, I agree. Uh, so the that, issue was that they were very, very, very close friends. And then they hung out together in Austin and things got semi-dramatic for varying reasons, but both sides will attest to different reasons. And then after that, um, Melina doesn't consider themselves much of a friend anymore. Darius is probably back and forth on it, I guess. And Darius had something with his dog leaked out. Melina's talking about it with chat and he perceives that as she's shit talking him after they were previously very close friends. And then that's the issue that Darius has. I, then I reached out to her last night too. Afterwards, I was like, dude, are we like not friends or something? And she's like, I don't think I want to anymore. And I'm like, well, what's up? And she's like, I don't want to talk about it. I'm sleepy. I'm like, okay, well, that sucks. And then like, I wake up in the morning and there's like messages of her saying, Darius just keeps fucking up his life. He's just a fucking loser. And I'm like, dude, like what the fuck dog? Like I would never in my life, yeah, I, you're doing dumb decisions like right now even. And I'm just like, you know, like I'm not going to fucking sit there and go and chat and just make fun of you. Um, you know, and I know you made decisions in the past and I'm not just going to go out and like, now that I don't feel like we're friends or whatever, just go make fun of you. I'm doing it right now, honestly. But it's like. I got to this point to where I, I felt like I have to, and it just it just feels pretty um, shitty. Yes, that is fair. I, I I'm now? gonna be honest. I I don't want to comment on it. I don't want to get involved. Yeah, I get. Okay, yeah, I get. Melina's like your friend. Drama like this, I want to stay like thirty feet away from because I just like I don't know what yeah, the fuck's it's like going on. And stuff, so it's like okay, I get that. Well, it's it's like, more just like no, it's it's literally just like I don't know what the fuck is going on. You're both talking. What? You're talking mile a minute. Uh, which is incredible, and I, I, I just I don't know I don't know what the situation. I think it's pretty understandable. Or what do you mean? What wait? What is he saying that doesn't make sense, or you don't understand? Uh, for me, like th when he he's like talk super fast. Nothing. It's fine. I don't want to weigh in. Oh well, then why'd you ask him for his input? Yeah, because <laughs> he he popped in. and I was just trying to understand what was going on. It seems like, like, okay, like you're yeah, hoping that that's maybe fair. I just understand a relationship, and then you could have owned me epically. But now that I've explained it, it's kind of like oh okay. But uh, that is kind of what it sounds like happened, Kyla. <laughs> you were going to get an I'm epic own yeah, on him. Like, like super cool and stuff. Like I, I, I thought. Why, why really do you think too. that I would try to have an epic own on you? Well, because like, I don't know why. Like I started this off as like, oh, is this like the relationship thing? I was like, yeah. And then I finally, and you're like really interested in it at the start, but now you're not. I was. Then you started to explain it, and I'm like, wow, this is way more complex, and don't have both the sides nearly as much as I want. I'd rather not weigh in on it. Comment on anything, just put the my side. I don't want to. <laughs> Why? Uh oh. What? Uh oh. Isn't that how this show goes on? The Molina general? Mafia. People oh, usually, no. People usually why, come in here alone. Why do you want me to comment on anything? I'm really well, sorry about your dog. I'm, it seems I'm, like if she mocked you about your dog, that's pretty insensitive and that sucks. Not cool. Um, I don't know what the fuck happened in Austin, so I'm not sure what to say about that. Um, but yeah, it's kind of shitty that somebody's like mocking you publicly about your dog. That that's, super sucks. That's poggers. Okay, that's that's really all I could ask for. I, it just seemed like it was a little. I don't, I don't think you have ill intent, but it's just, you know. Call her a simp. <laughs> Call her a simp, Darius. That's what she's doing. She's simp. Maybe, maybe there's an issue there. I, I don't know. There probably is. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, but Steven, you got to get her off her stream, bro, like ASAP. Okay. All right. Bye. Got a what?
Gotta get her off the stream, man. She's like, in the I she said she's not. She said she's not leaking anything. Any she's not leaking secret. things. She's just on this. She's just trying to talk about things with like NNN, Biscuit Raider, and TC Brady, and like it's just like fucking weird, man. And she's like, oh well, Darius could have done so much better in his life. I'm like, what the what the fuck is this whole thing, dude? Like, what the what the, like what, do I'm just start going like, oh yeah, well actually, Melina could have done a lot better. And here's uh, the play by play with me and my fucking three, you know, Nadush and Kodali. Like, what the fuck is that shit, dude? Like, it's fucking weird as fuck. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think it's dumb, I, but I don't. But you control her. I don't control her. Oh, okay. Well, never mind then. Oh, hold on. I'll go tell her that it's not polite. Okay. Can Thank I you. Do that? Base. Okay, that's okay. That's the base. Okay. All right. I gotta clean up before my fiance goes at me. Sorry if I sound like I was. Uh, uh, you're good. I mean, it sounds like you're pretty frazzled. I hope your dog's okay. Is your dog in uh, surgery right now? So yeah. So she is um good now. So she's if just. You and, uh, real real talk. If, if you and Sushi split up, who gets the dog? Oof. That's my. It's my dog. So it's your. Does she know that? Yeah, she has like the cats, but okay. she, she. Yeah, we. She doesn't know that though. Okay. All right. Base well, moment. Okay. Sorry to derail your thing. Bye. That, that's fine. That, no, you're good. All right. Well, I feel she like does. it's a really, really bad sign if uh, you're in a relationship with someone and they even know the word gaslighting. You're like, all right, well, it's been okay. I'm yeah, fucking out. It feels like hey, no, I can't tell. Alone. I go back to the stream. I get more triggered. She went on. She started off her stream <laughs> saying, I'm not really. I'm just, if anyone wants to talk about it, I'll just make a comment. And then she's not just making a comment. She has the whole fucking podcast crew in there having a fucking back and forth between what is factual and what's not. And then they're all just like, Melina, you're kind of being fucking retarded. She's like, well, I have good reason. And then it goes on. <laughs> and then, uh, we, today is going to be a good just, day. Yes. Okay, that's it. I'm done now. I'm sorry. But, Don't you message like Biscuit or TC? TC. I actually did message NNN and I sent him messages that uh, about stuff while she was talking about it. But I think that's uh, probably not good for my brain to be watching hate watching. Darius, the best so, that's true. No, it's Darius, probably not the, good for your brain. It's not hate watching, Darius. It's you are becoming informed. In order to be like absolutely effective with what's happening right now is that you need to be completely plugged into everything that's happening. You, you enjoy this stuff a little too much, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I want you to win. And I'm telling, I'm giving you the tools. In order to win, you have to know what's going on. You can't like unplug and sit on the couch. You got to be in it to win it, Darius. All right, I'll be right. And if there's shit's going on, you need to fucking put a stop to it. So go figure out what to do right now and end this shit. Because this is not, you know, if someone was shit talking me like this, like I would do something personally. Jesus Christ. Uh, that is true. That is true. I mean, if you want to just sit there and take it, that's fine. Anna. Also, what is the thing you said? Do I have to? I am. I'm doing something with Anna. Tabor messaged me asking me for details <laughs> on Anna, and I don't. I don't understand. He said it's from you. Me or Dan? Huh? Dan. Oh no. Uh, I mean, I probably know what they're referring to. If Dan's not going to tell you. Oh, this is like you know. If you, Stephen <laughs> always does this stupid thing, like where he tries to like. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, like, Dan didn't actually want to say anything, but... And it's so predictable. You're so fucking bad at lying. Well, Darius is literally who, asking you in public. Who believes your fucking bullshit? No one. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm sorry, you think yours. I'm lying? You think I'm lying right now, Dan? You yeah, yeah, oh, block? yeah. Oh, yeah, see, now we're taking it to another level that it's not normally at. And I prefer the old bullshit. You just oh, the old, wait, on. tell me, do you think I'm lying or not? Tell me. You, oh, I, dude, you are lying. Is fucking oh I am lying, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, you are lying. I haven't talked to that bitch in a year. Okay, so what Dan and Tabor are referring to is Dan and Tabor were keeping tabs on some of the moderation or whatever in Anna's community, and they were saying that you got secretly in there. That's what he's referring to. Oh, oh okay. okay. That is true. Very you interesting. Well, but that, I was, that was sent to me. I did not go looking for Dan, that. Dan, you I just, shitster. I, I, hmm. I woke up to some information delivered. I have a lot of, <laughs> I have a lot of like, uh, you know, what do you call it? little birds all across Twitch that come and they they, they uh -huh. tweet to me? <laughs> little, mm. They tweet to me information, and I'm like, oh, okay. Thank. I sometimes I'm telling you, I show, showed it to Steve. I wake up and there's fucking dossiers of fucking information. You got, you got, you got okay. Fingers and all what the pies, you guys Dan. good now? Are we good? Dan. Wait, 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 wait. I, didn't anyway, hear it. I hopped in too late. Doing? I hopped in too late. Which one was it? Oh God. Oh God. That's I didn't see her here. <laughs> yeah. Darius, what are you doing in that community? Are you just trying to be persona non grata? Huh? Oh, when he oh when he was in her fucking Discord can watching you believe, her Tabor, can you believe silent it? Did you hear a sneaky NFL name? Superstar Tabor <laughs> snapping. Stop oh, saying that, or he's gonna get actually unhinged. fired from his shit. Please Sorry. stop. Holy shit. This is good. Okay. Dan, you're a little shit stirrer. I yeah, am. That's what he does. Through and through. It's Dan the content man. 
Not the content's content. usually bad. No. It's why not. are you here then? Why the fuck <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, you're, there's a reason why you're coming on my stream. Okay, chill. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm I'm trying to fight with Dan. I'm trying to have content with Dan. We need uh, we oh. need a, a a feud. Oh, well, he already okay. should start to the max between you and Max. So I know. True. Wait, so you want another feud? Yeah, I want I want a feud with everyone on the internet. Yes. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> that's my that's my game plan. That's I'm probably just not a good mental health choice, but you you do you. <laughs> What's mental health? Never yeah. heard of it. Hey, you said you um you take clonazepam, clonopin, right? I do. Yeah. So when you take that, is that like instant effect for anti anxiety, or do you have to like build it up in your bloodstream, or what? So yeah, it's like pretty instant. I take it like as needed. So uh, some people build it up and when they're on it like long term, but I take it like when I feel like I'm having a panic attack or before I like go out. Wait, panic public. attack or what about if you're just stressed and kind of like thinking about shit and it's like all you're all oh, over the place? I don't think anyone should just take it for like being stressed out. No, I'm just asking a question. Just asking. That's all. No, I gave you an no, answer. Okay. Yeah, I gave you a, I gave how you many, a pretty solid answer. How many uh, milligrams do you take when you do it? Last question. Uh, I take half of a... 0.5 so i take 0.25 very tiny amount okay gotcha. that's 25 milligrams or no 0.25 no. 0.25. 0.25. 0.25 milligrams of active ingredient that sounds really low no I yeah it's on. super low i'm only i'm 5 to 118 pounds i don't need to take like a, a lot wow, thanks of for the full drug. bio do you want to give us a birthday and then a location <laughs> yeah. and everything these well are, no i obviously clonopin obviously it, these are yeah, blue pills feels... the blue pill right with a little s in no it? you got you grabbed your cialis there dan <laughs> go look at <laughs> No. Listen, your wife wants it a lot. What am I supposed to do? I can only do so much, Steve. Oh, you want to be in the next drama too? So you're there. Let's let's just let's just leave it there. That I win, I'm on top, and we end it there. Yeah, okay. yeah okay. let's just leave it with me with me getting the final word, and let's just end it there. Okay, that seems fair. Anyways, okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, all right. What else, boy? You know, I can well, I what? can smell some content coming on here, but really, uh -oh. it's all on cake, and he knows what I'm talking about right now. Wait, I don't know. What is no, that? No, you don't. You don't need to know. <laughs> Wait, Danny, what does that have to do with? No, it's not, it's you know, it's private. Um, <laughs> so Lav, tell me what is new in mm. your world. I, I recently. Wait, can I get your opinion on something real quick? Controversial? Yeah. Well, maybe I might not answer, or <clears throat> say that I have to go. Do you think sites like QB Farm should be removed from the internet? Oof. No. You don't think so? Why not? You know that uh, you QB know, Farms is like a central coordinating point for lots of different types of uh, harassment. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. God, you're such a baby. Never no, mind. Sorry. Dan, else. founder of Tiny Chat, like big fucking oh, media mogul fucking, over here, like isn't going to actually, go, isn't going to actually enter an opinion. Never mind. Forget it, Dan. Don't worry, pussy. Well, it, it's all, it's all fucking down. No, go ahead. Talk there. to Lab about how she feels about Mr. Girl. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, Let me get you on that. No, no, God. that's fine. That's fine. Let's get on the real topics. Okay. So Lab, when's your next internet debate going to be against a guy that triggers you? That's what you want to know, right? I I messaged him. So uh, someone sent me from his like private uh, uh, stream, I guess his like private viewer stream that he was um, still keeping this whole narrative going that I'm like sexualizing minors. And that's like really annoying to me. Um, and I, I messaged him about it and he like just doesn't want to clear it up. And I think that that's ridiculous because his whole his whole platform is like very much. <laughs> Not that. So it so feels I very give like... You like a pro tip with Max. Like once he's decided on something, he's never, he's unlikely to change it unless he himself decides to change it. So like, I don't know yeah. if like asking him to change his narrative or any of this is like going to be... Keep in mind, like, careful, Erudite is a big pillar of the max hater community so that is not even true i like he's a big um, pillar of the max hater community, okay? that is not true that is i was true. i was saying that we should just have like a conversation like if we could talk about it like on stream so that people could understand where i'm coming from and he could still keep his opinion whatever um but when he's selling it to people like i'm sexualizing minors and that's like it it's like okay <laughs> Like, that's just, that's one wrong and two, like, so inflammatory and bad faith that, but whatever, if that's what he wants to do, then that's fine. It's just, it feels like that goes against, like, everything that he's, like, for, especially in the conversation that, I don't know, that he had last night uh, with uh, with uh, Steven and, and Chud. He was like, you know, your platform is so important. And it's like, okay, you're, a, you're fucking stupid. Like, he's just, uh, he's just Max. Where's, where's Mr. Girl at? Let me see if I can. I gotta go. <laughs> hey, Mr. God. Girl's coming in here. I can't do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> um, yeah. 
Um, but yeah, I think that um, I think he's a big loser. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't think he's a big loser. Um, but I do think he's uh, probably struggling. He's been he's been different. Right. Wow. Oh, well, Max is my friend, so I'm not engaging in shit talk with one of his sworn adversaries, which is you, especially <laughs> with Erudite, a pillar of the Max Hater community in here as well. So, I, I reject that, Sash. What do you mean the pillar of, of the hater? She's a pillar mean? of the Max Hater community. Do I, have like, do I have like an Erudite pill that I try to get people to swallow to believe that Max is whatever you narrative? Might. You might. I swallowed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually really really like max i i he hasn't been posting like good content though. <laughs> Is that that's true? A, yeah he hasn't posted one of his like talk videos in a while um so i hope he's doing okay is that but, a uh, passive aggressive jab or no genuinely i know that i know i think that um me and him are similar in the way which like uh the public odd like the public outlook of ourselves like really affects our inward outlook and I think that maybe um, like a month ago when everything was going, I think after the whole like uh, sex doll review video, he it was probably really hard for him to like be online. I think that like a lot of his audience turned against him. A lot of people turned against him. And I think that was probably like really strange for his uh, like self-image. Um. Lev, have you met Darius before? No. <laughs> I you guys would be perfect for each you other. You guys would make <laughs> amazing content together, actually. Yeah, I think I I just listened to to Darius. Yeah, you did. He's like he's, he's like, like super a, insightful. He not well. I won't say he's insightful, but you know what? He's high energy. He's always that guy. He's like, hey, let's go do something, you know. And sometimes guys like that. He's like your manic pixie girl to mm -hmm. you. So imagine mm -hmm. that. That's poof. He, he, uh, do you think I'm a manic a pixie girl, Dan? Well, he's, a, no, he's about to, to break up with a sex worker, so... He'll be like, your he manic pixie too. girl. Okay, uh, hold on. He's not going to break up with Sushia. That's fake news. Number two, Darius is a cool guy, so stop slandering him in here, okay? With I'm, him not slandering not being him. I'm not so, slandering him. I just him. said he was insightful. He's on the, yeah, on wait, the Protect hello? the Friends. They're being... Thing. Listen. Darius, if you hear this, I am There's a lot of malfeasance going on in this room right now, okay? No, I think, you know... Have you turned a new leaf, Stephen? I feel like in the past you would we'd be willing to should talk to your friends. <laughs> well, 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 right now Darius in the middle of legitimate drama. I don't legitimately right. shit on. I'm people. more meant like Max, to be honest, than than Darius. Oh. I don't well, I also Darius don't like to. If there's like a bully group against Max, I don't want to be in here contributing to the bully group. I like Max, and we just had a really heated argument like two days ago. So or yesterday. So we had like a really heated argument recently. And now the next day, I'm like on a stream with like three people like shit talking. It's going to make it seem like I'm actually upset with it when I'm not at all. So I don't want to hey, give that impression. I, I wasn't shit talking him at all. But Shut up, Dan. You shit talk everybody. No, never. <laughs> I just ask questions. So. Is that um, why you and Chad get along so well? Because you guys just both ask questions? Wait, hold on. Darius no. messaged Destiny begging him not to shit talk. No, that is not true. Darius has not messaged me anything like that. I just don't want to shit talk somebody when they're in the middle of like big drama. And I, there's obviously it's really emotionally involved. And there's a lot of complicated shit going on. I don't want to contribute to that being like a more fucky situation for him. Everything is like really complicated over there. Okay, what's up? Wait, am I? Hello? Yeah, hi. Oh, you're oh, live. Oh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I was, I was the dummy. I was the dummy. I feel like nobody should talking Max. All right, I have Let's to... Uh, Shut up, Bro, Dan, what please. a hate boner you I gotta have. go. Give it up. We haven't talked about Max once today. Have fun. You're a loser. I <laughs> all right. Oh. Oh, you're leaving too. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. All right, go ahead and leave. This oh, is just Jesus. Jesus. You wanted to okay. get If Kyla leaves, I leave. Ask. Just make okay. an ask, Steven. What? Make an ask. What do you want? I want you to get the fuck out because you want to leave. I don't want you to be here if you don't want to be here. I, you know what? I have things to do if you have conversations uh, you'd like to have. Just like Bye. yesterday. You just message me. You, what the fuck do you want? And you just fucking fall asleep. I don't know what you want. What do you want? Keep not kick, chat. Keep not kick. Bye, yeah. Kyle. What? See you later. <laughs> not my fault that your husband wears me. <laughs> that sounded really weird. Just leave. Well, yeah, nice try. Mind, just leave. Nice just get out. try. Just get out. Me and Nick are All real right. close, though. You would understand. Bye. All right. I'll, uh, I'll see you Friday, buddy. Bye. Leave. Bye. Bye, Kyla. Bye. Bye, Taper. Have a good day weekend.